You know it's this. Take a perk and talk it and see. Money swallowing like six. Did it perfect to the kid. Got a million who's sick on my head. Got a million better put on the road. I just win. I know we got a million dollars. The devil that's it and I chip it again. Hello and welcome back, fellow anime lovers, to Manga Muse. I am delighted to have you join us once again in the world of fanfiction and fantasy. This is the second part of What If Naruto Enters Fairy Tale Verse. Special note, this fanfic is written in a masterpiece of Lanky Nathan on fanfiction.net. Do check and support the author too. Now smash the like, share and subscribe button for more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss such great parts. Thanks for the introduction. Now let's dive into the world. Alright, let's try out Futen. Fukuha Kansu no Jutsu Wind Release, Clothes Drying Technique. He tensed and suddenly, he was standing in the center of what looked like a giant water bomb explosion. The floor, walls and roof had all been sprayed with millions of water droplets, the intensity of the drenching decreasing as the distance from Naruto increased. Patting himself down, Naruto grinned happily. I have to say, total success, Databeo. Stepping out, he then slipped on the now well-lubricated stone floor. Typical clumsiness kicked in and in a thunderous crash, Naruto found himself amongst a number of upturned tables. The door to the room was flung open a second later as a panicked Murajane came running in, only to slip over just as Naruto did. Her landing was a lot quieter than Naruto's, but the thud that echoed through the room as her backside made contact with the floor promised a colorful bruise later. Groaning, she rubbed the area tenderly as Naruto laughed at her, quite amused. Dropping her head in frustration, Murajane got to her feet with a wince and found the light switch. Naruto's eyes thinned to strips as he was blinded by the brightness that flooded the room. Waiting a moment, he opened his eyes to find a note thrust in his face. What happened here? Laughing sheepishly, Naruto explained what happened as best he could. Nira looked at him disbelievingly but all Naruto could do was shrug. Not his fault it worked so well. Pulling himself to his feet, Naruto righted the tables before grabbing the pen. So yeah, I was planning on going out for an early morning training session. I didn't mean to wake you. Shaking her head, Mira smiled. No, that's alright. I would have gotten up soon anyway to start opening the guild. Go right ahead. Breakfast is at 8.30. Grinning, Naruto ran for the door. Pausing, he ran back. What time is it now? Mira giggled. 6.30. Plenty of time. Catch you then. Dropping the pen, he gave her a wave before disappearing out the door. Standing on the roof of the guild, Naruto held his hand to his eyes as he surveyed the town. He whistled, not expecting such a massive amount of houses so tightly packed together. Behind him lay a vast expanse of water which was probably the ocean. The town then spread out backward from the port. Largish craggy hills raised up on either side of the town, probably twice the height of the guild. A few trees spotted them but quickly disappeared at the base where the houses came up to meet them. An interesting canal connected to the ocean wove its way through the city, branching off at random individual points. It seemed to split the town in half too, the front half looking older than the back half. Far beyond that though lay a large expanse of green and blues, shimmering slightly in the warm red sunbeams of the morning. Grinning, Naruto took a deep breath of the rich air and dived off the building. Landing lightly on a roof several houses over, Naruto pushed off and began roof hopping as he dashed toward the grass plains. Jumping high across the canal, Naruto whooped out loud as he flew. He couldn't remember a time when he had felt so full of energy. Damn, this place is just brimming with life. When I go home, I must find a way to come back here. Jumping high, Naruto used Shunshin to send himself even higher into the air, grinning broadly at the spectacular view. Spreading his arms wide, he let himself topple forward in a lazy arc as gravity began its job of pulling him to the ground. Landing heavily on the stone pavement, his powerful legs absorbed the shock before springing him down the lane. Houses, carts, trees and the occasional pedestrian blurred past him. Nothing more than a few streaked lines as Naruto laughed heartily to himself. Damn it felt good to just run sometimes. Finally bursting from the stone jungle, Naruto skidded to a stop as he checked out the land. The occasional rock lay about the grass with a few more trees here and there. Swinging an arm around, Naruto jogged on the spot for a second before running over to a rock. Sizing it up, he lifted the thing out of the earth with a grunt. Alright, 50 squats. Dropping to his haunches, he stood back up with a groan. The rock was a bit heavier than he first thought. Nevertheless, he finished off the 50 and dropped it back into the hole. 
what followed that was a few reps of push-ups, sit-ups, and chin-ups, all with something heavy added to increase resistance. After finishing off, the blonde wiped his forehead and dropped down on a rock to take a breather. Naruto, hearing his name called, he turned around. Standing behind him was that weird spontaneously combusting kid. What's his name Natsu? He shouted something that sounded challenging and finished off with a finger pointed at Naruto. Naruto just dropped his head to the side and squinted one eye. Wah. Bending over into a backhand spring, Naruto barely missed the flame-coated punch that was aimed at his face. Bouncing back a few meters, he growled and pointed a finger back. Oi, warn a guy before you come in swinging like that, Databeo. Natsu just let out another battle cry and charged. Sighing, Naruto smirked and raised a cross with his index and middle fingers. Fine, you wanna play? Let's play. Unleashing a powerful kick into Naruto's face, Natsu was totally unprepared for the explosion of smoke that went up upon impact. He didn't get time to think about it though as Naruto suddenly came from behind to boot Natsu fair in the middle of his back and send him spiraling away. Landing lightly, Naruto grinned. Kawarami body replacement plus cage bunch and shadow clone equals Naruto kick in your ass. How'd you like that? Natsu stood up and wiped away some spit from his mouth as he glared at Naruto. It looked like he was gonna take it seriously this time. Raising his hands, Naruto settled into an easy stance, waiting for the boy to charge. It only took a moment before they were back at it again. Naruto's eyes easily tracked the path of the wide, yet powerful punches that were coming in at him from all angles. He fell into a defensive form, easily redirecting the punches away from his person, his grin widening as he did so. Natsu didn't seem to have all that much of a technique and assuming this was how he always fought, he seemed to rely purely on his impressive speed and power to simply overwhelm his opponents. Rolling his eyes, Naruto thought back to his academy days. This must have been much like what Kakashi-sensei experienced when he first fought him, just without the flaming hands. Hearing a frustrated cry, Naruto smirked. It seemed this boy had the same temperament as young Naruto too. His punches were getting wider and sloppier as he tried to throw more force behind them in an effort to break Naruto's guard. Thinking about that first fight with Kakashi, an evil twinkle entered his eye. Palming a fist wide with his inside hand, Naruto gracefully spun around the outside of Natsu and wound up behind the boy. Clasping his hands together, Naruto formed a strange seal with both index and middle fingers pointing up. Time seemed to slow down as Natsu's head turned, eyes blazing. Let's see how you like it Konoha style. Senen Goroshi. Upon contact, Natsu let out a horrified, pain-filled scream as he was sent rocketing into the air, hands clutching his grossly violated backside. Naruto just dropped to the floor, racked with laughter as his unfortunate victim was sent flying into a tree. Ha 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 you should have seen yourself. Oh boy, that's just too much. I think I'm gonna die, Databeo. Naruto continued to roll around on the ground for another five minutes before he finally managed to control his breathing enough to sit up. Wiping tears away from both eyes, Naruto continued to chuckle and hiccup as Natsu finally fell from the tree with a splat. Struggling to his feet, Natsu held himself up by a hand on a shaky knee, glaring daggers of hatred at the still giggling boy. Hobbling forward, Naruto held up a hand, the other still occupied with holding his aching sides. Wait wait, it's breakfast time. You know, food. Naruto made a biting motion, erratically being interrupted by a hiccup or chuckle. Realizing the time, Natsu looked to the sky before his eyes lit up. Shouting something at Naruto, Natsu took off at a swift pace, though still with a hitch in his step as he ran. Falling onto his back, Naruto closed his eyes in bliss as he let the sun warm his face. What a way to wake up. Feeling something wet hit his cheek, Naruto flinched and touched the spot. Water. Hearing a rumble in the sky, Naruto rolled over and looked off at the horizon. Deep black clouds had begun to assemble over the ocean and had started making their way towards land. Cursing his luck, Naruto pushed himself to his feet. This probably meant he wouldn't be able to go check the area he appeared in for clues now, and on top of that, any minute ones would probably be washed away. Cursing again, Naruto looked over his shoulder to the greenery behind, wishing he knew where they had found him. Sighing dejectedly, Naruto turned back to the town and started running. Where do you think Naruto could be? It's absolutely pouring down out there. Lucy and Murajane stood back from the guild door by a few feet, looking out at the grey sheet of water that stormed down from the sky. Natsu had appeared earlier, shaking himself like a dog before charging down to the basement to find some food. You looking for Naruto? Hearing a cute little voice, the girls turned. Happy. Yeah, we're just wondering where he is. He should have gotten back a while ago. Knowing on a raw fish, the small airborne cat somehow managed to speak around it without muffling any of his words. Natsu said he went to fight him this morning. 
After that Natsu left Naruto behind because it was breakfast time. Lucy raised her eyebrows. Oh really? Do you know who won? Happy looked up in thought. Natsu lost. He said something about getting finger raped. Blinking a few times, Lucy just turned back to the door. I think I'd rather not know. Just then, a bang and crash sounded out in front of the doors as Naruto toppled down off the roof to land in a crumpled heap before the trio. Naruto, running into the rain, both girls grabbed an arm and dragged the blonde inside. Shaking his head, Naruto spat out a mouthful of water and mumbled something in his language. Mira fished around in her top before pulling out the magical pen and paper. What happened? Why are you so late? And how did you get up there? Standing up, Naruto held a hand out, motioning to wait a moment. Stepping back, he formed a weird hand seal and visibly tensed. A bomb seemed to go off and a startled Lucy, Mara Jane and Happy froze as the front halves of their bodies were hit by a shockwave of water. Looking over, a now dry Naruto paused before laughing awkwardly and taking the pen and paper from an immobile Mira. Peering at it, Naruto had to wave it about a bit to dry it off. Uh, sorry about that. Put too much force into it, again. So yeah, I was on my way back here when the storm hit. I couldn't see a damn thing and by the time I reached the guild, it was too close and I kinda smacked into the second floor. Oh, and I jumped. Daintily taking the paper back, Mira opened an eye and read the note. She paused at the last answer but just shrugged it off. Forcing herself to move, she nodded stiffly before writing something. That's okay, so long as you're safe. Oh, and try not to set off your water bomb thing around us anymore if that's possible. Naruto stuck his tongue out at this, scratching his head and nodding apologetically. He then looked up and saw Happy floating there. What the? Seeing his questioning glance, Lucy shook off her shock and took over. This is Happy. He's Natsu's pet cat. Yes, those are wings. Yes, he can talk and yes, it's magic. Having all questions answered, Naruto shrugged and accepted it. He'd seen weirder. Sticking a hand out, Naruto smiled and introduced himself. Naruto. The cat stuck its own paw out but didn't take Naruto's hand. Happy. They then stood there for a moment before Happy turned away without a word and floated off down to the basement. Not quite sure what to do, Naruto looked at his two remaining escorts. Seeing Lucy sigh and Mira chuckle, he lowered his hand. They then motioned for him to follow them as they walked past him and towards the basement. He stood there for a moment before deciding it would probably be in his best interest to follow them. Why? Dropping flat to the ground, Naruto stared at the table that sailed over his head, barely missing him before shattering on the door he just walked through. Casting a shocked glance over at the two girls he followed, he saw them chatting away casually like the entire room before them wasn't in the middle of an all-out brawl. Pulling himself to his feet, Naruto looked around to make sure no one saw him dive to the floor. No one. Good. Dusting down his front, he made his way over to the girls. Writing down something, he tugged on Mira's sleeve. Uh, so I take it this happens a lot around here. Eyes widening, Mira quickly nodded. Oh yes, sorry I probably should have warned you. It happens that often that it's actually surprising when something isn't getting destroyed. Dodging a flying chair, Naruto shook the wood chips out of his collar and glanced back at the writhing mass of activity. Really now, looks like fun. As the girls went back to their chat, Naruto turned to see who was actually amongst the giant human wrecking ball. Not having met all that many people, Naruto couldn't really pick out anyone he recognized, except Urza who was calmly walking through the middle of it as she aimed for the bathrooms, swiftly dealing with any unlucky sod that got too close to her. A sudden spurt of flame from the far side of the rabble made Naruto chuckle as he realized who else was in there. Trust Natsu to be in the middle of that. Casually dodging a flying cup, Naruto raised an eyebrow as he saw a flash of skin come to the surface. There were girls amongst it too. Laughing, Naruto shook his head. The females in this world were crazy. Unfortunately, that single momentary lack of concentration caused Naruto to catch a bottle to the temple with a great deal of force, knocking him flat to the floor. Jumping to his feet furiously, Naruto shouted at the group, Oi, who threw that? Everyone instantly quietened for a moment before bursting out laughing at the massive bump that had formed on Naruto's forehead. Growling angrily, Naruto stomped a foot, forgetting that they couldn't understand him. I asked who did it. The group just laughed harder, one part from how funny he looked, another part from how funny he sounded. All systems blaring, Naruto picked the guy who was laughing the hardest and tackled him. It didn't matter that he looked to be well over two meters tall, well-muscled and with a crazy spiked, white hairdo. He was going down, Yuzumaki style. As soon as that happened though, everyone jumped in on the two and the tussle began anew. Murajane and Lucy had watched Naruto's reaction and both were laughing quite hard from the end result. Wiping a tear away, Lucy looked up at her friend. Naruto really fits in well here. I just hope he joins the guild. 
biting her lip to halt the giggles, Murajane nodded. You would make a fine addition to the family. I hope so too. Naruto now sat in front of a large collection of curiously dressed individuals, all of them peering at him like he was the latest circus freak that had just come to town. He looked around nervously as they all chatted away, totally unable to understand a thing they said. Murajain seemed to be happy to speak on Naruto's behalf though, and was answering their questions as best she could. A shout off to the side caught Naruto's attention and he looked over, thankful for the distraction from the crowd of eyes. Natsu for some reason was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with what appeared to be another member of the guild. He had dark shaggy hair, eyes that slanted down at the ends and a fairly well-toned body. The reason Naruto could tell that last fact was because he was staring into Natsu's eyes angrily, wearing nothing but a pair of boxers. His other clothes had somehow managed to end up strewn all across the basement, his shirt over near the kegs of booze, his pants at the other end of the room near the bathrooms, shoes dangling from the rafters above. Turning to face them fully, Naruto smiled as he readied to watch the fight. What he wasn't expecting, however, was for Natsu's opponent to begin to pull his boxers off, seeming like he didn't even realize what he was doing. Seeing way too much but cleavage for his liking, Naruto quickly spun back to the massive eyes. At least they weren't naked. Trying to mentally scrub away what he had just seen, Naruto looked up as the massive man he first tackled stepped forward. An enormous paw of a hand extended. He had a respectful look on his face as he patted his chest. Elfman, standing and taking his hand, Naruto managed to get a better look at him. Standing up close to this guy really drove in just how tall he was. While Naruto wasn't the smallest person, his height of 166 centimeters had him only just coming up to the chest of the 2 meter plus giant, his spiky white hair only adding to his impressive height. He was decked out in a large full sleeve shirt with a high popped collar in a deep blue. He also had a matching set of long pants, finished off with a set of simple sandals. He had a hard face, with a scar running down from his left eye to disappear under his chin. For some reason though, Naruto could get the feeling that this guy saw him as a worthy equal after he tackled him. Smiling up at the newly dubbed Elfman, Naruto nodded his greeting. Naruto. The blonde then heard a bit of a commotion behind the massive man and looked around him to find most of the men and women of the guild jostling for a place in the lineup behind Elfman, seemingly all wanting to shake his hand. A bewildered look crossed his face as fights along the line began to start. Was he really that important? Levy then jumped in to rescue Naruto, holding her arms wide and shouting at the group. A few of them seemed to object but were ignored as Levy ran back at Naruto and took an arm, scooping him up and dragging him away. Naruto just let himself be hauled along, at a complete loss to everything that was going on. It took a minute or two, but eventually Naruto and Levy found a quiet corner of the guild away from the prying eyes of the curious members. Naruto still had that owlish look of loss on his face as he numbly watched Levy reach into a bag she had with her and begin to pull out sheets of paper. Sensing her companion's discomfort, the girl looked up at him and gave him a reassuring smile. She dug about in her bag and pulled out a piece of paper and started writing on it. Finishing up, she spun it around. Oh, sorry about that. They tend to get a bit rowdy when someone new comes down, especially when that someone tackles Elfman. Nodding slightly, Naruto reached out for the pen. So that's just normal. Does that mean that lineup was normal too or am I for some reason super important? Levy shook her head. No, after you shouted at them, they all just wanted to hear you speak again. You're more of a novelty to them now. Ah, uh, sweat dropping. Naruto didn't quite know how to feel about that. On one hand, he was relieved that it wasn't some ridiculous traditional greeting he'd never heard of. But on the other he's now just a plaything. Sighing dejectedly, Naruto let his head drop to the bench top in a thump. Levy patted his head and said something, probably along the lines of, It's okay, don't let it get to you. The girl got back to work, quickly lining up pages and arranging them in some format known only to her. Smiling as she finished, she tapped Naruto's head and pushed the paper forward. All right, now that I have your written language mostly worked out, I want to try learn to speak it. This may take a little while, but it will benefit us both. Lifting his head, Naruto browsed through the note before scribbling something back down. Yeah, you have the important symbols worked out so that's all right. I guess I best learn it too then. Do you have any way of writing down your words above mine so I can learn to read them? Nodding happily at Naruto's forethought, Levy started shuffling through her bag and came up with some blank pages. I can copy the notes onto this if you'd like. I'm sure you'll pick it up quickly if you study nightly. Placing it over the translator page, she then focused and a small, bright yellow ring shot out from her hands, apparently copying everything onto it. Again, Naruto flinched as the circle stretched out. It didn't matter if he'd seen it a few times already, it still creeped him out. 
Once it was done, Levy handed him the page, now covered with both languages, Naruto's original word on top and the translation below. Browsing through it, he nodded. Grabbing the pen, Naruto scratched another question down. Can you make a few more copies? Like say, 50 or so. Levy's eyebrows raised, but she nodded and in a few seconds had 50 copies at her disposal. Here you go. I don't understand though. It was Naruto's turn to send her a knowing smirk accompanied by a mischievous wink. Just follow me to the door quickly. Standing, they ran to the front of the guild and stopped a short way away from the doors. Grinning again, Naruto crossed his fingers and spoke. Cage Bunshin. In a scream of total surprise, Levy fell backwards onto the ground, eyes near popping from her head as suddenly fifty Naruto's filled the area, all of them wearing the same annoying grin. They then ran forward as a group, grabbed a piece of paper and then disappeared into the rain, some running the streets, others jumping the roofs. Naruto started laughing as Levy just sat there, eyes unblinking and mouth gaping like a fish. Looking around, he noticed the few other people present were staring at him in total disbelief. Shrugging, he walked over to her, picked up the shell-shocked girl and carried her back to their seats. Everyone was going to work out his abilities at some stage. No use keeping them hidden forever. He dropped her back onto her spot and sat down, resting his chin of the back of his interlocked fingers after writing something down. He began mentally counting down to the imminent explosion as he saw the light start to flicker in Levy's eyes. 4, 3, 2, 1. Naruto then closed his eyes as Levy screamed a question at him, his hair blowing back from the force. The moment passed and Naruto then simply pushed forward a pre-written answer to the shouted question. That was a skill of mine, Shadow Clone. It allows me to create solid replicas of myself that have a full independence of their own. They all just went to find a nice quiet spot to study what you gave them. Once I dispel them, I'll gain all the information they studied and be 50 steps closer to knowing the language. Understand. Blinking several times, Levy tried to speak but found that her voice had deserted her. She looked around for a bit longer before just shaking her head in disbelief and awkwardly began to shuffle through her papers with no real direction. Chuckling to himself, Naruto wrote another note before standing and walking off. You gather your thoughts. I'll get us a drink. Several cups of water later, Levy felt stable enough to continue with the lesson. Her hands hadn't stopped shaking yet though, much to her displeasure. Sighing, she took the pen and paper and focused, managing to keep her handwriting legible. Right, what we've got to start off with is the basic things. What I wrote down for you on those sheets of paper would be a good place to start. Teach me how to say the words, then later we'll work on the grammatical structure of the sentences. Seeing Naruto nod conceding, Levy smiled and pulled out yet another sheet of paper from within her bag quickly copying the information onto it. Supposing she should start with their home, she pointed at Guild. Naruto nodded and spoke the word. Listening intently, Levy jotted down the word, spelling it as best she could in her own language so she could revise later. Motioning for Naruto to say it again, she then watched his mouth so she could visualize the way he enunciated it. Beside the word, she then quickly scratched down a rough diagram of how Naruto's mouth was positioned. Nodding, she then tried it out. Her attempt drew a chuckle from Naruto as she stumbled over the word. Pouting, Levy looked down and tried again. It wasn't that the language wasn't interesting in its construction, it's just that it was a bit harsher than Earthlands. The vocals and sharp muscle movements made it hard to correctly form the words. Trying it out a third time, she heard an approving noise and then Naruto repeating the word. Smiling happily, Levy nodded and moved on to the next one. Twas going to be a long day. Stretching, Levy grinned down at the progress. The two of them had sat working on the language for a good eight hours, despite Naruto's protests thirty minutes in. That whole time, it had been raining heavily outside too and was only now beginning to show signs of finishing. Looking up at Naruto, she rolled her eyes as she saw the boy with a cheek resting in his hand, looking like he had never been so bored in his life. Grinning, she decided to try out what she had learnt. Flicking through the pages, she found a few words and concentrated as she spoke. Came on it no bad. Looking up lazily, Naruto smirked at the attempt. He had to give it to the girl, she was damn persistent. Dropping his hand, he corrected the mistakes as he stood up. The teen nodded happily, correcting herself and then gathering her papers. Looking up again, she noticed that Naruto had left a note and was currently walking towards the basement. So happy that's over. I'm gonna find something to eat. Laughing to herself, Levy pulled the rest of her material together and stuffed it into her bag. Slinging it over her shoulder, she twisted her head from side to side before following Naruto. She heard a voice call her name and waved at the person, an occasional fan that stopped past the guild to say hi to everyone. Walking down the stairs, she opened the door and saw Naruto sitting at a table, glaring intently at a menu in front of him. 
Mara Jane was also standing beside him, eyes wide as she wrote down his orders, not quite able to believe that Naruto was actually able to understand some of what was before him. Seeing Levi, Mira held a hand out to call the girl over as she finished up. Falling into step with the beautiful lady, Levi smiled up at her knowingly. So what exactly did you and Naruto get up to up there? Barely a day has gone by and he's already grasped the basics of reading. Levi looked up in wonder as she replied. Well, it appears that Naruto over there is a lot more talented than we already knew. While we were studying, he asks for a thesaurus of a sort, about 50 copies. Basic words of ours with his translation beneath it. This is where it gets interesting. He ran to the front of the guild, said something, and poof, he created 50 identical replicas of himself. Mira gasped softly in surprise at the explanation and glanced over at the blonde enigma who still looked very smug at being able to read small amounts. Each then grabbed a copy of the thesaurus and disappeared out the door to go read over it for the day. From what I could understand, once they finished memorizing the information, they popped and the gathered information returned to Naruto. If that's the case then, and assuming each copy studied the full eight hours we were, that means Naruto just did the equivalent of 400 hours of studying in just one day. Wow, Mira turned and looked reverently at the boy who had decided to start picking his nose as he waited. Finding something sizable, he pulled it out and flicked it across the room. Nodding with her, Levy sighed. Honestly, his capacity to learn far outstrips me. Should he put his mind to it, he could very well learn any single thing he wanted to within the space of a month. Sooner even, if it wasn't that difficult. And that's just with 50 of the things. Who knows, he might even be able to create a hundred. Reaching the bar, Murajane walked behind it as she began to prepare the meals, still bewildered by Naruto's hidden ability. Dropping to a seat, Levi rested her head on her arms and sighed. Hearing the scraping of a cup, she sent Murajane a thankful smile before sipping the water placed before her. A few moments later, the seat beside Levi was pulled out and Lucy dropped into it with a huff. Honestly, Natsu and Grey are impossible. They just won't stop fighting, and then they wonder why I get angry at them when I get pulled into it. Levy giggled to herself as Lucy shook her head in disgust at the two rivals. Looking over at the two mentioned boys, Levy saw Natsu and Gray scrapping on the floor, Gray's clothes getting thrown everywhere as he unconsciously disrobed mid-fight. Shaking her head with a small smile on her face, Levy couldn't help but wonder if Gray would ever learn to keep his clothes on around people. Yeah, it was a habit he picked up from his teacher years ago, but still. Swirling the water around in her cup, Levy giggled again when she heard Grey cry out in disbelief when he found himself naked again. So what did you and Naruto get up to all day today? Turning back to Lucy, Levy bit her lip in wonder. Well, I tried to learn how to speak some of his language, while he learned how to read a bit of ours. If you want, I can show you the notes. Raising a hand hesitantly, Lucy declined pleasantly. And no, no need for that just yet Levy. Leaning forward, Lucy then rested on her arms, unaware of the amount of chest that started spilling from her top. So how long till you will be able to talk to him? Taking the cup up in both hands, Levy smiled as she looked down into the liquid. Well honestly, I believe Naruto will learn how to speak ours first. He has a remarkable ability to learn things at over 30 times the normal speed. I'd even say that by the end of the week, he'll not only be able to speak our language fluently, but read and write it as well. Placing a delicate hand to her open mouth, Lucy gasped and looked over at Naruto who was now digging into his meal with great fervor. Really? He's that smart. Laughing, Levy took a sip. Well, I wouldn't say that he's nothing like Urza in that regard I don't think. He just has a technique that helps him learn really, really fast. Sort of like the Gale Force reading glasses, only better. Lucy nodded, trying to grasp an idea of what Naruto did. She envisioned him wearing the red, wing-rimmed glasses that she had and giggled. She highly doubted he'd wear such a thing, even if the model capable of allowing the reader to read at 600 times the normal speed had been released. Hearing a hiccup beside them, the girls looked over to see the master now sitting beside them, a schooner of beer in one hand. He hiccuped again and looked up at them, a light flush adorning his cheeks. How you doing my fine girls? Things going swimmingly. Backing away slightly from his rancid breath, Lucy did her best not to pinch her nose. Why yes, master. Me and Levy were just talking about Naruto. Naruto hey. Taking another hefty swig from his mug, Makarov let out a sigh that was invaded by a burp. Not noticing, he continued. That boy that boy he's a strange one. Knew it from when I first laid eyes on him. Knew what I did I tell ya. Leaning in, his voice lowered to a whisper. I think he might be an alien. Both Lucy and Levy had to place a hand over their mouths as they struggled to hold in their giggles. Hearing the muffled laughter, Mira came wandering over to their rescue, an amused look on her face. Master, are you tormenting the girls again? Looking up at Murajane, Makarov snorted indignantly. 
How could you say that? I was merely Disku Disjez discussing Naruto and his oddness with them. I haven't even tried to peek on them yet. Taking another gulp, the little man missed the glares sent at him. Slamming his mug down, he leveled them with an intense gaze. But still, Naruto wanted to go see his home, where Lucy stole him from. Hey, so I hereby authorize Hick, Natsu, Luffy and whoever else who gives a damn to take him out tomorrow and give him back to his home. Lucy's eyes thinned in despair as yet another guild member got her name wrong. It's Lucy. Feeling a tug on her sleeve, Lucy looked over as Levy sent her a smile, clapping her hands together. Oh Lucy, can I come? I still wanna learn stuff from Naruto. Laughing, Lucy nodded. Of course. Why did you even ask? You knew you were more than well K. Jumping to her feet, Lucy glared daggers at the seedy old man after he had discreetly reached out and gently patted her bottom several times. He even had the nerve to continue patting the air as he drank, looking like he wasn't even aware of what was going on. Grumbling to herself, Levy watched as Lucy stomped off, complaining about why she was subject to all the unwanted attention of the guild. The next morning, Natsu, Lucy, Naruto and Levy stood at the door entrance, happy floating about as per usual. Murajane and Makarov were there to see them off, one nursing a bit of a headache after his bender the previous night. Yawning, Natsu scratched his pink hair irritably and picked something in his teeth with his tongue. So why did we have to take Naruto back out there? It's too early. The question got him a smack over the back of the head from Lucy, though the blow did nothing to him. We're taking him out there because we know where he landed. It may be early, but an early morning start for once in your life would do you good. Grumbling to himself, Natsu fell silent. Turning back to Mira with a beaming smile, Lucy waved at them. Well, if that's the case, we'll be off then. Bowing slightly, Murajane bid them farewell. As they turned, Naruto paused and tugged at Levy's sleeve. Turning, she saw Naruto motioning for the paper. I wanna stay here with Murajane and practice speaking and reading. Just give me a moment. Huh? Dropping his bag, Naruto crossed his fingers. Cage Bunshin. In a scream much similar to Levy's yesterday, Lucy fell backwards in horror as three extra Narutos appeared around the original. She squeaked through her wide open mouth, pointing at the new group. Running to her side, Levy took her friend's hand and patted it. There, there. This is how Naruto learned things faster, remember how I told you that. Seeing Lucy nod hesitantly, Levy smiled encouragingly. That's a good girl. Now, just try to ignore them and everything will be better. Trust me. Standing numbly, Lucy nodded again before turning and walking out the guild doors stiffly, Levy leading the way. Natsu, however, had finally woken up and was taking a great deal of interest in the new technique. He was running around the three, poking and pulling at the clones in total fascination as Happy circled above, just as interested as his friend. Waha, this is so cool. How'd you do this, huh? What kind of magic is this? The clone currently afflicted with Natsu's affections was holding its hands out, trying its best to convey it couldn't understand a single thing he was asking. Makarov and Murajane were also equally surprised at the ability, though not quite so badly since they had been forewarned of it. Grinning at their faces, Naruto held out a note to Mira. So I was hoping to leave a clone here with you to learn how to speak your language if that's alright. Sighing, Mira shook her head apologetically and replied. I'm sorry Naruto, but I'll be too busy with work today to do anything. Frowning, Naruto called over one of his clones. What if you had helped them? Could you talk as you worked? That's all I want. Raising an eyebrow, Mira looked at Naruto uncertainly. Ah, uh, I suppose no offense intended though, but it'd be a bit weird having a male serving. Reading this, Naruto just sent her a wide smile. Signaling to his clone, it grinned and formed the ram seal. Henge transform, instantly coughing and spluttering. Makarov and Murajane waved the air before them as smoke filled the area. It dissipated quickly and their jaws dropped when they got a good look at the clone. Where the male once stood, now posed an extremely leggy, blonde girl with her hair pulled out into twin pigtails, each golden cascade reaching down to her lower thigh. A chest that rivaled Lucy's was barely contained behind a skimpy maid outfit, and above that, she had an absolutely breathtaking face, comparable even to Mira's beauty. Three scars adorned each cheek giving her an exotic look and with a wink, sealed her position in the guild master's heart. Hired. Hired. That girl is hired. Mira, get her a uniform, now. Not even bothering to calm the excited man, Mira then turned to an impassive Naruto, hands in his pockets, shrugging nonchalantly. She sent him an incredulous look as he just smiled at her. What you know transformation magic too. Tapping his nose with a grin, Naruto took the offered pen. 
my dear Mira Chan, that be called Chakra, remember. No magic here. Slipping back into a seat behind her, Mira raised a hand to her forehead, trying her best to understand just what this boy could do. Seeing another note passed under her nose, she looked up. So can she stay? A defeated sigh left her lips as she looked up at the cheeky blonde. Smiling, she shook her head and took the paper. You really have a way with people, don't you Naruto? Grinning sheepishly, Naruto just squinted his eyes happily and scratched the back of his head. Shaking her head again, Murajane stood and looked over to the clone who was currently entertaining Makarov. You are a spectacular specimen my girl. Truly, first class material. The clone just giggled and placed an index finger to her lip demurely. Makarov blew something when he saw this, his small form being rocked backwards by a powerful nose bleed. Rolling her eyes, Mira chuckled and took the girl's hand. So what am I going to call you? Catching Naruto just before he left, she quickly scribbled him a note. Do you have a name for her? Naruto shrugged. I dunno, Naruko would work. That sound okay. Smiling, Mira nodded. Yeah, that's fine. Now scoot, all of you, before the master comes to. The road to Naruto's point of arrival was more of a gentle stroll than anything with the group happily taking their time. Basking in the warm light of the mid-morning sun. Naruto's creation of the extra clones had become apparent rather quickly when he set each one with a member of the group to learn each one's individual speech quirks. He had Levy give each one a transcript paper and sent them over. The clone with Natsu and Happy ended up playing games with the excitable pair, jumping around the trees and rocks, screaming incoherently more often than not and setting fire to random things even more frequently. This resulted in Naruto needing to continually replace clones that were popped due to the harsh treatment. Not much was actually learnt during this, but it was a lot of fun. The clone with Lucy was treated to the girl's explanation of her magic and abilities, once she stopped being weirded out by the fact she was speaking to a chakra copy of the original. It turned out she was a celestial mage, capable of summoning creatures of varying strengths and abilities, assuming she had the key connected to it. She even had a number of rare gold keys which connected with the spirits of the Zodiac, which held immensely powerful beings that far outweighed the standard spirit key that could be bought in a store. So far, she had four of a possible twelve. Levy was lucky in that she got to be paired with the original Naruto. The whole trip, the girl had her books and papers out, struggling to handle them all as she tried to catalog Naruto's words. Even with the help of her blonde companion. The group had to stop every 10 to 15 minutes to pick up papers that spilt from their arms. Despite this, they still made good time, mostly due to the group having to run to catch up to Natsu and Happy who consistently drew ahead. About an hour or two in, they took a break and Naruto dispelled his clones, closing his eyes as he sifted through the information gathered. It was all rather clumped, some areas of the language being clearer than others, but that was just because of the specialized information each individual spoke on. Hearing Levy and Lucy chatting, Naruto tried his best to join in, disjointedly throwing in comments whenever he thought he understood something. His speech was a great deal better than what it was when they first started walking, but it still wasn't quite right, what with Natsu's habitual cursing occasionally rearing its head in Naruto's speech. It managed to get a few laughs out of the group though so Naruto was happy, even if it wasn't exactly what he wanted. After a few light refreshments, Naruto created another batch of clones and they continued on. Finally reaching the area, Natsu jumped forward, nose in overdrive. Yeah, yeah this is the place. It still smells weird. So what you looking for Naruto? Happy floated down and came to rest on Natsu's pink hair. Hey, hey, will you be going to get sucked back into the air? Are there any yummy fish over there too? If there are, bring me back some. Having dispelled the second round of clones, Naruto understood the majority of what they wanted. No looking for clue. Maybe Teak, learn how I a risk got here by check. Grinning, Natsu dashed forward. Great, we'll help you look. I. Before they could get too far though, a hand caught Natsu's vest and another Happy's tail. Wait, you maybe mess up Clue. I go one. I. Lucy walked up to the energetic pair and sighed as she looked at them. What Naruto means to say is that he'll go first. He must have something he can do that will help him find anything. Natsu's eyes widened unhappily as he began to argue. But that's boring. Why can't we help search? I can fly around with Happy. We won't even touch anything. Aw, this sucks. Letting the pair go, Naruto stepped past them. Check up sky look down okay. What? Struggling to find the words, Naruto resorted to the piece of paper. I mean, fly up with Happy and check the area from the sky. You won't be able to damage much from up there. Blue. That's what I'm talking about. Come on Happy to the sky. I. Dipping in. Happy then grabbed the boy by the back of his vest and lifted them off, quickly disappearing into the trees. Watching them go, Naruto nodded. 
Taking a deep breath, Naruto then exhaled slowly and became completely still. Both girls shared a look when he did this, not used to his lack of energy. Naruto what are you doing? When he didn't respond, they walked around in front of him, just as his eyes flicked open. Gasping, they took several steps back, not able to understand what had just happened. Everything about the boy was completely normal, except for his eyes. His usual crystal blue irises had undergone a strange transformation, now a strange yellow in color. His pupils had also changed, elongating out sideways from the usual circle to an odd rounded rectangle shape, finishing off the odd altercation. Naruto's upper eyelids were now rimmed with a reddish-orange pigmentation, the coloring coming to a shallow point as it reached towards his ears. Looking at their shocked faces, Naruto let out an awkward laugh and scratched his cheek. Uh, sorry, I explain in moment. Tentatively passing the still gaping girls, Naruto tried smiling disarmingly again before turning and running down the path. Looking over at each other, the girls looked at each other before shaking their head. What was up with those eyes? Levi shook her head, understanding just as much as Lucy. I don't know. Every time I think I learn a little more about him, he goes and does something else like that. I wonder what else he's hiding. Swallowing, Lucy nodded. Why, yeah. I just hope he really is a good guy, and not just hiding it. Beginning to walk, Levi shook her head. No, he's definitely good. You can't hide evil intentions completely unless you had total memory loss, and even then you can tell sometimes. From Naruto though, I sense nothing but good from him. Holding a hand to her chest, Lucy worried her lip, but not at all the same. I just hope he tells us a bit more about himself sooner rather than later. Humming softly in agreement, Levi fell silent as the pair followed the mysterious blonde. Following the sensation of chakra, Naruto dashed over a hill before skidding to a stop, eyes darting around. Wherever he landed was somewhere close around here. There was a definite chakra signal nearby that wasn't native to the strange aura of the area. Closing his eyes, he focused. Reaching out with his enhanced senses, Naruto silently thanked his late teacher for forcing him to complete sage training. Without it, Naruto was one of the worst sensor ninja in Konoha. Following the fading blue tinge in the air, Naruto walked right up to the spot where he was dropped. Reaching out tentatively, Naruto let his hand swirl around the remaining chakra. Nodding, Naruto easily confirmed it was indeed Kakashi's energy. So he had accidentally sent him here, probably during that explosion. Waving his hand through the air gently, Naruto cocked his head thoughtfully. Chakra signals were usually left when a ninja used a technique. The spike would then fade and follow the ninja as he or she moved, leaving a trail. The difference here though was that Kakashi's trail was focused on a spot right in the center of the chakra mass. Licking his teeth as he thought, Naruto brought a hand to his chin. Did that mean then that the chakra was following itself back to Kakashi? If so, would that mean it was possible to track the chakra and open up the wormhole again? Raising his eyebrows at the possibility, Naruto began to channel some chakra into his hand. A quick thought entered his mind though and he shut off the stream instantly. What if it needed Kakashi's chakra to reopen the gateway? There clearly wasn't enough here to do that, but he wouldn't want to go and contaminate what was left. Frowning, Naruto pulled out a scroll. He didn't know if sealing chakra was possible, but it was definitely there, even if it was invisible to the naked eye. Waving the seal through the mass of blue, Naruto channeled energy into the seal and crossed his fingers in hope. A poof went off and Naruto grinned. Success. A chunk of the blue had been absorbed into the paper upon sealing. Quickly labeling and storing the scroll, Naruto then reached back out into the blue mass. Again channeling some chakra, Naruto felt for the point of infinity in the middle of the shrunken blue mass and tried to coax it open. Frowning in concentration, Naruto played with the tip, desperately trying to push even the smallest of holes into the non-existent point. After a little while, Naruto sighed and gave up. He could feel something there, but it was impossible to push open. Feeling Lucy and Levi watching him from the top of the hill, Naruto sighed and opened his eyes. It didn't seem like there was much else here, all other possible physical evidence having been washed away in the rain yesterday. Looking over his shoulder, Naruto called out to them. Be no scared, K. Okay. Blinking several times, Levi and Lucy just raised their eyebrows and nodded. Guessing that it'd have to do for the moment, Naruto turned back. With Kakashi's chakra slowly dispersing, the only way to find this exact spot again would be to leave another, longer-lasting chakra spike. And to do that, what better way could it be than a ball of pure chakra? Frowning in concentration, Naruto held his hand out as the air above it began to swirl about. The rapid rotation began to distort the air as energy began to form above his palm, condensing in on itself until it took the shape of a tight blue ball. Focusing on that, Naruto then began to grow it until it was the size of an average human head. 
the power the thing generated was enough to whip the surroundings winds up into a strong breeze, causing the trees in Naruto's clothes to begin to flap around. Halting the ball's growth, Naruto then relaxed and let it destabilize. It wobbled around a bit, quickly turning into an egg before the chakra lost form and went up in a noisy bang. Nodding to himself, Naruto dropped his hand. That spike would be good to last for at least a week or two easily. Sighing, Naruto relaxed and the odd pigmentation around his eyes faded as his irises returned to normal. A sudden outpouring of sweat then coated him as the transformation ended, strangely exhausting the boy. It passed in a moment though and Naruto turned, wiping away the beads on his face. Smiling up at the girls, he beckoned for them to come down. Looking around cautiously, they took a hesitant step forward before Naruto started laughing at them. Huffing, they pouted and stomped down. Reaching him, the teen sat down and motioned for them to join him. Doing so, they then turned to their bags and pulled out a few snacks, sharing the treats around. Looking to the sky, Lucy then cupped her mouth and called out. Natsu, happy, food. Barely a heartbeat later, the two appeared over the trees, crowing happily at the development. Happy got a little too excited however and dropped Natsu from a fairly decent height onto the ground. Though the group heard him impact and saw the puff of dust, it didn't seem to phase the boy as he sprinted over and dropped down next to Lucy, grinning from ear to ear. Happy then landed on Natsu's shoulder, eyes twinkling as he sucked up a stray strand of drool. Lucy just rolled her eyes and threw Natsu a snack bar and Happy a small fish. Now having dealt with those two, Lucy turned her attention back to Naruto. So, is it okay if we ask you a few questions? Wiping his mouth, Naruto put down his water flask and nodded. Alright well then, what was that weird transformation from before? Seeing Naruto not quite understand, Lucy dragged her fingers around her eyes, simulating the color changes. Nodding, Naruto held his hand out for the pen and paper. This is too hard to explain with speech. That was a little ability called Senjutsu. It has a couple of uses, but the one I used it for then was to sense where the exact point I fell from was. Normally I suck at trying to pinpoint energies, but that allows me much finer sensory abilities. Lucy raised her eyebrows at the response, but merely accepted it as another oddity the boy had. Why did you do that? Again, Naruto took up the pen. Well, if I knew where I fell from, there may have been a chance that I could have forced it open and got back home. It didn't work. Naruto sitting there was proof enough of that. Levi then leaned forward, looking at Naruto with glowing eyes. So what was that blue ball you had? It was beautiful. She mimed holding a ball, just so Naruto fully understood. For the third time, Naruto took up the pen and paper. I can't wait to learn to speak fluently. This writing business is driving me barmy. That was a technique called Rasengan, one that my dad created. It's a strong attacking style technique, but I just used it to leave a chakra signal here so I can follow it back here later. Not quite fully understanding how that was possible, Levy frowned in concentration. She went to speak but was cut off as a loud roar in the distance made everyone look up. It rapidly drew closer, throwing everyone on edge as screeching noises began to accompany the initial roar. When Urza driving some strange wagon-like thing popped over the hill though, everyone relaxed except for Naruto who was still wondering just what the hell that contraption was. It looked like a standard, four-wheeled horse-drawn carriage, though the shell of it was made from metal instead of wood. The difference, however, was that at the front of the wagon, there was a single-person seat screwed down onto a flat platform, which was currently occupied by Urza. She was holding a joystick that seemed to control the steering of it, and from her right arm, had what looked like a tourniquet wrapped around it with a tube that lead from the arm band, into the brace surrounding the seat. Skidding to a stop in front of the group, Urza looked down at them sternly. There has been an emergency. I need you all to come with me right now. A hushed intake of breath sounded through the group as Naruto just stood there looking confused. Stepping forward, Lucy looked up at the mage. So what happened? Looking off into the distance, Urza sighed. It seems that an old magic has fallen into the wrong hands. The dark guild Eisenwald has somehow found the black mage Zeref's evil magic lullaby and is planning to attack the upcoming guild master's meeting with it. Master obviously knows this, but is going nevertheless to warn the others. He has explicitly asked me to gather the best team I can and try cut off Eisenwald before they can make it to the meeting. You are the group I chose. Now get on. Seeing the seriousness in her eyes, the two girls nodded once and ran to the doors either side of the wagon and slipped inside. Natsu and Naruto however remained standing outside, looking at the thing. Natsu, get in. Cringing at the barking order, Natsu looked up at Urza pathetically as his cheeks began to take on a green tinge. But I hate transport. Can't happy just carry me. 
The cat had already flown into the car and looked out the window at Natsu. Natsu, you know I can't fly as fast as Urza drives. She's a lunatic when she gets driving. A shaggy head Naruto recognized then poked itself from the window and smirked at Natsu's obvious discomfort. What's wrong Ash Breath? Can't take a little rocking. He then began to sway the wagon from side to side, laughing as Natsu grew ever greener. Frowning, Urza unstrapped her arm and jumped off the seat. Grabbing the woozy boy by the scruff of his neck, she walked him over and then threw him in through the window. A slimy groan then floated out the window as the carriage rocked with the force. Turning to look at Naruto, she sighed. He wasn't a part of her initial plan, but she couldn't leave him behind. Brilliant. Walking up to him, she pointed at the wagon and began trying to drag him towards it. His eyes widened as she tried to pull him along, but Urza quickly found him very firmly attached to his spot. Frowning, she put more effort into the tug but still Naruto didn't move. She was about to grab him with both hands when Levi leaned out the window and called out. Naruto, it's okay. Just get in, I'll explain everything along the way. Looking over at the girl, Naruto swallowed. Safe. Levi nodded, smiling encouragingly. Safe. Nodding hesitantly, Naruto walked over to the wagon and got in, leaving Urza standing back with a slightly confused look on her face. Why couldn't I move him? It was like he weighed over a ton. And how does he already know bits of our language? Shaking clear the thoughts, Urza focused. She could ask those questions later. For now, the focus was on finding Eisenwald and stopping Lullaby. Naruto held on for dear life as the unstable vehicle bounced along the rugged road. More than once the boy checked out the window to see if they even were on the road. Levi sat beside him, trying her best to calm him and take his mind off things by harassing him for new words to study. Natsu hung halfway out the window, continually vomiting in human amounts onto the speeding ground despite having emptied his stomach of all its contents long ago. Lucy sat beside Natsu, half rubbing his back soothingly half holding on to him so he didn't topple out the window as Urza hit another rock. His little blue companion had even actually managed to fall asleep on the cushion between the dark-haired boy and Lucy. The previously mentioned teen Naruto had recognized from before had also introduced himself lazily as Grey. Getting the troublesome preamble over with, he now sat with his head resting on his fist, looking out the window like he was sitting on a motionless bench. He didn't even flinch as he repeatedly punched himself in the face as the carriage bounced about. To Naruto it just looked like he was trying to uphold a cool look or something. Feeling the hell damned contraption lurch again horribly, Naruto sank his fingers into the cushion under him, not realizing he was punching holes into the fabric with his fingertips. Levi did however, and jumped straight into an explanation of the wagon, trying to alleviate his fear. W what we're currently riding in is a magically powered four-wheeler. There are a couple of different types about but this one is, she paused as the cart momentarily grew airborne as Urza drove the thing over a sharp hill, is one of the safer models. Naruto sucked in a terrified breath and sent her a wide-eyed, incredulous look as he felt the thing rise up onto two wheels. She knew he couldn't understand much of what she was saying but pressed on anyway. Hopefully her talking would be enough to calm him. The only reason we're driving like this is because the engine is powered by the driver's magical power. The faster you go, the more magical power is used. And with Urza having one of the highest levels of magical power in the guild, she can afford to drive like this. Looking out the window, even Naruto's iron stomach gave a heave as the cabin bucked again. The outside world flipping around like it was being shaken around by a pair of gigantic hands. I gotta get out of here. Levi watched cautiously as Naruto reached out and grabbed the window. She then screamed in horror as Naruto quickly pulled himself out it, disappearing from sight. What the hell is that moron doing? Pushed aside, Levi saw Grey lean out the window trying to see what happened to the boy. Looking around, he failed to find a trace of Naruto until a finger tapped the top of his head. Looking up, Grey's eyes widened as a relieved Naruto looked down at him. What are you doing up there? Get your ass back inside now. Naruto shook his head and pointed at the roof. No, safe here. Just then Levi squeezed out the window with Grey and held a hand out worriedly. Naruto, take my hand and climb back in. Slowly now, laughing, Naruto shook his head again. It okay. Watch. Before they could say anything, Naruto stood up, arms wide as he caught the wind with his body, laughing loudly the whole time. The thing that shocked Grey and Levi the most though was that despite the incredibly harsh driving, Naruto stuck to the roof like a magnet, his feet not budging from their spots. Slowly pulling her hand back in, Levi blinked a few times before calling out again. S, so you'll be okay. Looking down, Naruto smiled reassuringly. Yes, okay. Sharing a look with Grey, the boy just shrugged and pulled his head back inside. 
Waiting a while longer, Levi looked up at a beaming Naruto with a mixture of concern and awe in her eyes. She then pulled herself back inside, only to come face to face with Grey, an eyebrow raised. So, you obviously know a bit more about him than I do. Care to explain? Holding a hand to her chest, Levi looked out the window. I don't really know what to say. Everything I do know about him is minimal at best. Every time I discover something new though, it just raises more questions about him. Unimpressed, Grey crossed his arms. Well can you at least tell me about a few of his abilities? I heard one skill is the ability to create solid clones. The new girl at the bar back at the guild is meant to be one of his, but that shouldn't be possible. Levy's eyes widened as she brought her eyes up to meet his. Really? There's a new girl? Grey nodded. Yeah, looks a little like Naruto. Same whiskers, blonde hair and eyes, but the only problem is that she's a girl. Mira said that Naruto created her though so. Shaking her head, Levi let out a humorless chuckle. I didn't see that happen, but I wouldn't put it past him. So far, I've seen him stick to the roof of a room like he was kneeling on the floor, create 50 clones in an instant, learn the basics of our writing in a day, and basics of our language in about the same time, maybe a little longer. I've seen him change the color of his eyes to yellow to help him sense energies better and create a shining blue ball of light in his hand letting it pop and then explaining that it's so he can track his way back to it via the yellow eyes, I said. And honestly, I believe there are possibly hundreds of other things he has still yet to show us. Falling silent, Levy looked around before taking a fresh breath. I don't sense anything bad from him but I find it hard to trust a guy with that many secrets, you know. We all have our own skeletons in the closet, but Naruto seems to have whole rooms filled with them. Nodding understandingly, Grey looked at the roof. No one expects you to trust him straight from the get-go. It would be foolish to anyway. Despite the outward appearances, even Master Makarov is cautious of him. He's just very good at hiding those kind of emotions. Nodding unhappily, the blue-haired girl rubbed her arm. I know, but I can't help but feel like we're betraying Naruto's trust in us because we don't trust him. Having listened to the conversation, Lucy smiled and gently kicked Levy's shin. Hey, don't let it get to you all right. I'm sure when he's ready, Naruto will tell us everything. Just give it time. Letting a small smile light her lips, Levy nodded. I guess you're right. I'm just being impatient. Laughing as the wind buffeted his body around, Naruto had to admit that once outside the evil box of doom, the ride was a lot more fun. It was totally worth catching a few bugs in his mouth for. Seeing Urza line up a hole, Naruto chuckled as the woman pumped more power into the wheels and sped up hitting the edge with enough velocity to carry them through the air and land them safely on the other side of the five-foot-wide dip. Steadying himself, Naruto had to admit that although she was a maniac, she knew how to drive this thing damn well. Wanting to see exactly how it worked, Naruto walked forward and sat down behind Urza. He found out that wasn't all that smart as Urza's long red hair whipped around in the air like a pit of angry vipers, snapping into his skin and eyes as he tried to see what she was doing. Wriggling to the side, he watched intently as Urza fought with the stick in front of her, muscling it around as the wheels tried to break free of her control. After feeling firsthand the incredible grip she had, Naruto wondered if there was anyone else alive that could drive so close to the limit. Dropping down beside her, Urza let out a startled scream as he landed, causing the car to veer off course harshly. Naruto flapped his arms around wildly as Urza fought to get control back. The screams of fear from the cabin behind them weren't really helping the situation either. After a terrifying few moments, Urza pulled the wheels straight before sending Naruto an absolutely livid glare. What the hell are you doing out here? Realizing he was in trouble, Naruto backed up slightly, holding his hand out. I, it okay. Sorry. Releasing a hand, Urza pointed at the carriage behind her. Inside, now, sweating, Naruto nodded affirmably, slowly backing away until he was within reach to climb back into the window. Moving out of the fiery redhead's sight, Naruto waved at the wide-eyed looks he was getting through the window before climbing back onto the roof. Screw going back in there. He'd rather face his death head on. Just as he was about to sit down, Naruto whipped his head around to look off to the left. While he wasn't all that great at sensing things, he could definitely feel something wrong off in that direction. It wasn't all that strong though so pinpointing it was impossible. As they rounded a bend, Naruto's eyes widened as he saw a long, snake-like creation speeding along a set of tracks. It had long, segmented body parts, connected by a coupling bolt and a few chains. The front of it looked like it was doing all the pulling though as smoke belched forth from a chimney near the nose of the thing. Squinting, Naruto could swear he could make out people sitting in the compartments behind the main engine part. Raising his eyebrows, Naruto guessed it must have been another type of magical contraption like the one he was currently sitting on. As they neared it though, Naruto could feel the wrongness increasing. 
Whatever it was, it was on that long snake. Leaning over the edge, Naruto looked in. Seeing Lucy being the closest, he reached out and tapped her shoulder. She screamed and jumped, holding a hand to her chest as she panted in fright. Ignoring her stress, Naruto pointed over at the track-born thing. Over there, something wrong. Huh? Looking out the window, Lucy calmed her breathing and looked at what Naruto was pointing at. Yes, that's a train Naruto. Pausing, Naruto considered the new word. A train hey. Interesting. Shaking his head, he got back to what he originally was on about. Inside train. Not right something. Seeing her frown, Naruto growled and held his hand out for the pen and paper. Grabbing it off Levy, Lucy handed it to him and Naruto leant in through the window, writing on the underside of the roof. No, I meant something inside the train feels wrong. Can't you sense it? Reading it, Lucy handed it to the other two as she looked up, now curious as to what was going on. No, I can't feel anything. Can either of you? Turning to Gray and Levy, she saw them shake their heads. Turning back, Lucy frowned. Are you just imagining it? Rolling the words over in his mind, Naruto started shaking his head as he worked out the question. No, no, imagine. I go check. Back soon. Wait, what? To the immense shock and horror of all people in the cart, Naruto flipped his legs over and held himself at a solid horizontal line from the roof, before flipping off. Naruto. All able-bodied people rushed to the window, jostling for position as they tried to see what happened to the blonde. Lucy ended up pushed to the back and was now scratching at Gray and Levy's backs, trying to get past. When they relaxed, she paused before assuming the worst. Oi, let me through. Let me see. They weakly gave way, pure disbelief on their faces as they continued looking out the window. What, what is it, what oh my. Beside the speeding wagon, Naruto was running, his legs nothing more than an orange blur as he easily kept up with them. His arms were stretched back in a streamlined angle, head bent forward as he squinted into the wind. Turning to face them, he grinned before giving them thumbs up and veering off to the side and shooting off towards the train. The gobsmacked group watched as he rapidly caught up to the train, grabbing a hold of one of the railings and pulled himself up with ease before disappearing into one of the carriages. They watched the now empty landscape for a few more seconds before falling back into their seats, eyes wide but not really looking at anything. Levy was the first to break the silence, blinking slowly as she turned her gaze to the other two. So, I didn't imagine that. Swallowing, Gray ran a shaky hand through his hair. If you did, then we're all going mad. Lucy slipped down her chair as they spoke. Oh, ha, he said he'd be back soon too, right? Nodding, Levy looked over at the train again. He really is a mysterious person. Gray sighed and looked out the other window. Too right he is. Oh, and Lucy, you might want to grab Natsu before he falls out the window. Looking over, the blonde screeched and dived at Natsu, just managing to catch his pants and pull him back in. Why didn't you grab him? Gray just shrugged, happy that things were mostly normal again. Why should I babysit him? Besides, you looked like you were having so much fun that I thought I'd leave you to it. Looking around the area, Naruto ignored the surprised looks as he slipped through the door. The roof was of a fair height, though someone elfman's size would have to duck. Windows covered both walls, with seats just beneath them, facing each other so travelers could talk with each other. There was also a small path down the middle of the carriage to get to the seats. Curious really, shaking his head Naruto started walking. He wasn't here to gaze at details. That weird feeling was much stronger in here and Naruto had to find it. The only thing was that it was a very general feeling despite being stronger. It was like it was being suppressed so pinpointing it was going to prove a challenge. Walking down between the seats, Naruto's eyes flicked from side to side, trying to work out where the sensation was coming from. It was similar to something he was quite familiar with, but it just didn't seem plausible. He had only felt it a handful of other times in his life, and that was only when around someone like Gara. It felt like a Jinchuriki was nearby. Seeing nothing interesting, Naruto opened the door and stepped through to the next carriage. Browsing over the people, Naruto's eyes widened as he saw a spiky hairstyle, very much like one of his hometown friends. Shikamaru. The man looked up at him, seeming to calculate Naruto's potential as a threat and then went back to looking out the window. Holding his jacket, Naruto let out a breath. The similarities between the two were astounding, but it was just a surprise. Naruto continued to look around, slowly stepping past the seats. Just as he passed the Shikamaru lookalike, Naruto saw him glance at Naruto out of the corner of his eye. Pausing, Naruto continued on into the next carriage. Sitting down in a seat towards the back, Naruto looked at the wall behind him. The glance mightn't have meant much to the average person, but Naruto was a ninja so anything like that was a warning beacon. 
Someone seemingly distracted with the window wouldn't have any reason to glance at him twice. And if he really was surprised by his outfit, he would have kept discreetly checking him out like the rest of the passengers. No, something was off about him. Looking around and finding this carriage empty, Naruto created a clone. Nodding at it, it opened the window and climbed onto the roof before running back down the train. Let the clone relay the message while Naruto waited. Settling down, Naruto got comfortable for the ride. The clone jumped off the end of the train, legs out in preparation for the hard impact. Landing, his shoes skidded a bit before his legs blurred into motion. Taking one last look at the train, Naruto looked off into the distance. Seeing a slowly disappearing cloud of dust in the distance, Naruto charged off. So how much longer will Naruto be? Happy, we already told you several times, we don't know. The blue cat had awoken from his nap and had begun to repeatedly ask the whereabouts of the blonde, quickly irritating everyone in the confined area. Taking him up in her lap, Lucy started stroking his fur in an attempt to keep him quiet. Thankfully it worked, the cat closing his eyes in bliss and leaning back into Lucy's firm stomach. Hey, that might be him. Where? Damn it Grey I just got him quiet. Leaning out the window, Grey covered his eyes from the sun and squinted at the dust cloud that was approaching from behind. It took a moment but Naruto came into focus as he caught up. Jumping, he landed on the roof and slid in through the window. Wah. Butting in, Naruto flicked a few times for the paper and quickly started writing. He adjusted to the blue cat as it flew into his lap, sitting down in the road of everything, peering at what he was writing. When I got onto the train I saw someone suspicious. Also, I can definitely sense something that shouldn't be there. I'm guessing that guy is connected with them. Tell Urza to follow the train, because that might be the lullaby you're searching for. Reading the note, Lucy frowned. Why haven't you told Urza then? Seeing Naruto shiver, Lucy instantly understood he must have had an altercation with her. Scared, Levi had to think for a moment before looking out the window and saw the town omnibus rapidly approaching. Leaning back in, she nodded to herself. Looking up, she drew their attention. All right, I have a plan. The train docks at the upcoming town before departing after a 30-minute wait, so if we can beat it there, which we probably will, we'll be able to head off this suspicious guy. And while there, Naruto, you can tell Urza about what you felt and not get in trouble. Nodding, Naruto smiled. Okay, I lead you to me. Pausing, the group gave him an odd look. I'm sorry. Patting itself on the chest, Naruto smiled wider. I clone. Everyone's eyes widened at the admission as Lucy began to hyperventilate again. Gray looked at Naruto suspiciously before turning back to the window, not fully convinced. He had to see this with his own eyes. Levy however just ought and accepted it. All things considered, one clone compared to 50 wasn't too bad. Sliding into the town sideways, Urza pulled the cart up into a perfect parallel park, stepping off the driver's seat and onto the ground before everything had even finished shaking. Natsu flung himself from the prison with absolute relief, landing face first on the ground, kissing it and swearing he'd never set foot in another motor vehicle again. Happy drifted out the window slowly, still yawning and rubbing an eye as he woke up after a second nap. Lucy stepped out gracefully and stretched her arms above her head, turning quite a few heads in the process. Gray and Levy were chatting about something and Naruto staggered out, not at all happy with that last sideways slide. Holding his head, Naruto made his way up to Urza and pulled on her sleeve. He flinched at the glare and held his hands out. It wouldn't do much good to get hit and dispel. I sense. Weird something in train behind. Still glaring at him, Urza crossed her arms. What? Seeing Naruto trying to explain, Levy ran up. Quickly discussing things in a mixture of his native language and hers, Levy was able to understand what he was trying to say. Urza, while we were driving, Naruto could sense something odd in that train we passed. He sent a clone out to investigate it and found someone suspicious on it. Sending a now annoyed glare at Naruto, Urza raised a hand. Why didn't you tell me? Cringing, Naruto shivered. Didn't want hit. No excuse. Swinging down, Naruto cried out and danced around the blow before coming to hide behind the small blue girl by his side. Internally laughing her head off, Levi held a hand out to Urza, trying to calm the woman. Urza, please forgive Naruto. He was only trying to help as best he could. He can lead us to the guy anyway, right Naruto? Yes. Rolling her eyes, Levi smiled. See? Si. So what do you say, let's go catch us this creep? First stop, the train station. Taking Naruto's hand Levi then began to walk him away from the redhead, all the while casting cautious glances over at her. Urza just watched them walk a bit before sighing and calling out to the others. Alright, we're headed to the train station to hopefully catch a suspect. Gray, please bring Natsu. Shooting the unofficial leader a hurt look, Gray began protesting. What? Why should I have to waste energy dragging that dead weight around? It'd be better to just dump him in the nearest bin and... 
he trailed off as Urza leveled a gaze of legends on him. What was that? Sweating bullets. Gray quickly retracted what he just said. And in nothing Urza. I'll just grab him. Nodding. Urza turned away as Lucy watched on. A bemused expression on her face as she watched Gray get scolded. She sweat dropped though when Gray just grabbed Natsu's foot and began dragging him along behind him, face down in the dirt. Watching him pass her, Lucy shook her head and began walking. They had a strange friendship. Nearing the Onibus station, Naruto stood up and stretched. It seemed there was to be a half-hour break before the train began moving again. Stealing a look through the window behind him, Naruto saw the Shikamaru lookalike stretching as well, looking like he was ready to get off. Good, now to just try and lead Urza and the others to him. Feeling the train draw to a halt, the doors opened and Naruto walked out the door casually, watching his target from the corner of his eye. He watched the man look around before popping his collar up high and tucking his hands into his pockets, disappearing into the crowd seamlessly. He had done this before it seemed. Quietly, Naruto created a clone and dispersed it, the brief presence of a random extra not being noticed by the busy crowd around him. The smoke didn't seem to be a problem either with the majority of people around him lighting up various pipes as they left the train. With the knowledge of where he was transferred to his clone, Naruto stretched and began following the man lazily. He made sure to stop and look in a few windows that were dotted around the station to put off even the slightest hint he was tracking him. When the man turned a corner into the main street, Naruto frowned and ducked into an alleyway. Getting away from the crowd, Naruto jumped to the roofs and silently ran across them, sliding to his stomach and peeking his eyes over the edge of a gutter. His eyes flicked around a bit before spotting the guy. He watched him wander through the crowd and head for a bar that looked like it said something about mages. Squinting, Naruto ran the symbols through his mind and managed to come up with the word Onibus Bar, mages only. Smirking, Naruto watched him disappear into the door. The fact this guy was a mage instantly made him an even better subject. Naruto would have loved to just jump down there, scoop the guy up and run him off for interrogation. But he could just imagine how well that'd go down when he couldn't even speak the language. Sighing, Naruto looked around and to his surprise saw a flash of long striking red hair walking down the street, people breaking around her to give her space. Trailing behind her was Levy on one side of his clone and Lucy on the other, obviously there to prevent any of the harsher knocks dispelling him. And rounding out the group was Grey and a dirty Natsu, glaring into each other's eyes as Happy floated above them, chirping gaily, creating another clone and dispelling it. He saw the clone with Lucy and Levy pause before looking up over in his direction. He made eye contact with it and gave it a slight head nod. Kawarimi body replacement. Feeling the usual rush that accompanied the technique, Naruto blinked before tapping Levy. I'm here. Looking up at him, Levy raised an eyebrow. Yes Naruto, I know. Shaking his head, Naruto pointed at the roof. Look slow. I reel me. Frowning, Levy looked up and saw a smile on the roof before it disappeared in a burst of smoke. Blinking several times to make sure she saw what she saw, Levy turned back to Naruto. So you're the real one now? He nodded. Yep, that's me. Biting her lip, Levy realized she was beginning to accept his strange abilities. Smiling to herself, she looked back at him. So where to now? Naruto pointed over at a bar. In there, tapping Urza on the shoulder, Naruto gained the group's attention. Okay, man with spiky hair black and topknot, and earrings with big collar. That is the man and in that bar. Nodding, Urza crossed her arms. Good work. We'll trail him to see where he goes. We should also probably send a few people out to ask about Eisenwald. Gray, Lucy, you two can, what? Naruto had his hand up and when noticed, pointed at himself. I can do. Clones better okay. Frowning, Urza shook her head. No, it would be too suspicious having 50 blondes wearing orange running around. Gray, Lucy what? Again Naruto had his hand up and grinned once noticed. I change. It okay, no one know it me. Watch, forming the ram seal, he muttered something and he went up in a puff. Urza's eyebrows raised while everyone else gasped as now a second Urza stood before them, grinning like Naruto usually did. Another puff went off and then Naruto was standing there again happily. See, sighing, Urza looked at the group and gave in. Fine, do it your way then. Be quick about it though, we only have 25 minutes left until the train leaves. Right? Be back quick. Disappearing into the crowd, the group watched him head for an alleyway. A moment later, a barely noticeable cloud of smoke was visible above the roof, and then Naruto came strolling back out. Walking up to them, he nodded. Okay, let's go. Heading towards the bar, Lucy took one last look at the alleyway and saw person after person slipping out and into the crowd. She counted at least 15 before a sharp call from Urza had her running. Inside the bar, the group got a table and ordered drinks, leaning back into their chairs as they waited. Tapping a finger to a beat in her head, Urza looked over at Naruto and leaned in. 
So can you see this fellow? Casting a gaze around the room, Naruto nodded. Corner behind Lucy, big spiky hair. Leaning back, Urza took a look and nodded. She could see the guy. He was hunched over his drink, doing his best to blend into the shadows and not attract attention. Back to the wall. Urza wouldn't have even seen him had Naruto not pointed him out. He also glanced about from time to time, checking his surroundings. It seemed normal, but the intensity of his glances as well as his hunched appearance and hands free for action begged to differ. Smiling as the waitress brought them their drinks, Urza paid her and took a sip of her root beer. Placing it down, she looked at her friends, glaring at Natsu and Grey. All right, it seems Naruto was right. Lucy, directly behind you is the guy we're looking for so unfortunately you can't see him. The girl's face dropped and her neck began to prickle, now aware of the person. All will why that have to happen? Can't I swap places with someone? Shaking her head Urza explained. No, that could be counted as suspicious and scare him away. He looks like he needs to get back on the train so we'll all follow him on all right. One person on each carriage will be good enough. Naruto rocked slightly as a memory came back to him. Yep, something happening with Eisenwald. Heard someone talk someone about rumor attack. Raising an eyebrow, Urza looked over at Levi as she explained. Naruto's clones can pop, and when they do, anything they've learnt comes back to him. That's the reason he's picking up the language so fast. Smiling grimly, Urza took another sip of her drink. Well, in any case, now that we know that this man is most likely a member of that guild, we'll have to capture him. Wait till he leaves and then we'll head him off. Seeing various levels of agreement, Urza returned to her tapping, watching the man out of the corner of her eye. About ten minutes passed before the stranger looked at his watch and stood up, leaving a few coins on the table. He then moved out and slipped into the crowd. Giving him enough time, Urza then stood up. Time to get him. Natsu, Grey, with me. Lucy, Levi, Naruto, you follow back a bit and watch out backs. Nodding, Naruto and the girls watched as Urza led the boys out, a tight grip on each of their wrists to stop them from mucking up. Waiting a moment, the second group then stood and wandered out. Entering the crowd, Naruto looked around to find Urza. Unfortunately the majority of the people were too tall so Naruto turned to Lucy and wrapped his hands around her slender waist. What are you, Naruto? Lifting her into the air easily, Naruto let her head stick up just over the crowd. See anything? Holding her skirt down, Lucy blushed a bright red and kicked around. Nothing like what you'd be seeing right now. Put me down. Come on Lucy, just have a quick look. Naruto has his eyes closed so don't worry. A little white lie never hurt anyone as Naruto currently had a light flush on his cheeks as he got a fine look at one of the best backsides he had ever laid eyes on. Levy was glaring at him but he wasn't too worried about that. Lucy's legs crossed in embarrassment but she stopped kicking nonetheless. Iurza is over near the T-train station. Can you please put me down now? To her relief, she found the ground under her feet again and looked up at the taller boy, pouting. He just smiled back at her his eyes a little less focused than usual. Blinking, he then began walking and clearing a path for the girls, the smile never leaving his face. As they walked Lucy moved up beside Levy and leant down to her ear. Liar. Giggling sheepishly, Levy stuck her tongue out and scratched her cheek. Reaching the spot Lucy described, Naruto looked around. Frowning he lifted up onto his tiptoes but couldn't see the other fairy tale members. Looking back at Lucy, he raised a questioning eyebrow. Looking around Lucy tried to see them. I don't understand, they were just here. There you are. Turning, the group saw Urza striding towards them, a furious look on her face. The group cringed under the glare, hoping they hadn't done anything wrong. Naruto however noticed a lack of members. Where Natsu, Grey, Urza growled and just barely stopped herself stomping a foot. Natsu decided that he'd jump the guy and so tried to run ahead. Grey and I managed to stop him but by that stage, the commotion had caused our quarry to startle and run. When I tried to spot him, Natsu kicked Grey off and Happy decided to take him for a fly. I have no idea where they are now and Grey is unconscious by the controls. Honestly, this couldn't have worked out any worse. Hearing the train whistle, Urza let out a frustrated cry and actually did stomp her foot this time. Damn it Natsu. While Urza fumed, Naruto's ears pricked as he heard a familiar retching sound. Turning to look at the departing train, Naruto also felt the wrongness begin to fade. Urza Sam. Naruto mentally congratulated himself for taking the death stare without a flinch. Wrongness just left on train, so man gone. Natsu there too, heard vomit. Slapping a resigned hand to her face, Urza sighed. Trust that boy. Oh well, back to the sea. Naruto leant down to Lucy. See, Lucy looked up at him. Self-energy, short for that magic four-wheeler. Nodding Naruto began following Urza. I want roof again then. Climbing onto his seat, Naruto looked over as Lucy called up to him. 
Varudo, by the way, what's going on with your speech? It's clearing up really fast. Scratching his cheek, Naruto chuckled. I left lots of clones here. They all talk with people and I just learning. Lucy narrowed her eyes. How many, exactly? Pursing his lips, Naruto had a quick think. Uh, 150 hundred. Lucy's eyes widened. What, really? Naruto, in the carriage. Looking at Urza, Naruto shook his head. No, I okay here. Rolling her eyes, Urza didn't push it any further and jumped into the driver's seat. Fine, but if you fall off I'm not stopping. Naruto nodded and crossed his legs. Looking over, Lucy had already climbed into the car. Shrugging, he let it go. Grinning as the vehicle reversed, he then let out a joyful laugh as they shot off down towards the tracks. Naruto held on tight and they bounced across the rocky ground. He raised a hand to his headband and held onto it as he felt the wind continue to tug it loose. Frowning, Naruto tightened the knot behind his head and stood up. They were rapidly catching up to the train and Naruto prepared himself to jump and board the last carriage. The opportunity was lost when Natsu was suddenly thrown through a window and into direct line with Naruto. Crying out, Naruto caught the boy's head fair in the gut and subsequently had the wind knocked right out of him, causing him to lose focus on his feet, lift off the roof and hit the ground solidly before rolling away. Watching the train begin to draw away, Urza was faced with a tough choice. Follow the man or grab Natsu and Naruto. After a moment of indecision, Urza groaned, pulled the brakes on and skidded to a stop. The Kanugi station was just ahead so the train would have to stop anyway, so they'd be able to catch up without too much hassle. Turning around, she got back to the duo and jumped off. Get on, now. I've wasted enough time on you Natsu. Groaning, Natsu held his head, looking up at Naruto weakly. What the hell is your gut made out of? Steel. Gasping in measured breaths, Naruto looked up. I could ask. Same thing. Lucy, Levy and Gray all popped their heads out the window, watching the boys lie there in pain. Lucy jumped out first and jogged over, her more nurturing nature desiring to make sure they were okay. Checking them both, Lucy puffed out her cheeks. So how did you get thrown from the window anyway? Sitting up, Natsu rubbed his head a bit more. That spiky-haired bastard we were chasing threw me out. Idiot. Lucy jumped to the side in shock as Urza pushed past and slapped Natsu hard across the cheek. How could you let him get away? You knew we needed him. Walking over, Gray smirked. You got beat up by him. How was he? Pouting, Natsu drew circles in the ground with his finger. Not much. He kicked me in the face but I didn't even feel it. I managed to get a good hit on him though till the train lurched. Some weird skull flute fell out of his pocket but that's when he kicked me out the window. Listening in on the convocation, Lucy gasped in horror as Natsu's description drew a memory. He did you just say a skull flute? They did have three eyes. Crossing his arms, Natsu frowned. Hmm, I dunno, it could have. I didn't really see. Looking over, Urza sent Lucy a look. What do you know? Her eyes dropped in fear as she began to give details. Lullaby. It's actually a curse song. I've only read about it in books, but one of the forbidden spells is the death curse. A horrible black magic that can suck the very soul out of the person it's cast on. Well, apparently this lullaby is even worse. The flute itself was never used for anything other than curses until the black mage Zareff got his hands on it. He turned it into a demonic flute, one with enough power that whoever hears the melody played by it will die. The mass death curse, lullaby, that instantly brought on a mass discussion between everyone as they tried to understand what was just described. Naruto, however, merely sat back, holding his stomach gently as he repeated Lucy's words in his head. A demonic flute, hey. Apparently demons back in his own world had been able to be locked into inanimate objects before, so this wasn't impossible. That would explain the strange feeling and why no one else could sense it too. If this thing really was going to be released and it was anything like the demon in his stomach, then it had to be stopped at all costs. Standing, Naruto started walking past the group. Get in car or I go on ahead alone. Everyone paused when they heard the tone of his voice. No matter what the situation, Naruto had always seemed to be carefree, much like Natsu. But now, this seriousness he was displaying was enough to make everyone, even Urza, quieten and quickly make their way back to the car. Pausing by the boy, Levy looked up. R, are you okay? Naruto shook his head and looked down with a sad smile. I seen demon in my home. I just want to stop it here. Returning the smile, Levy nodded and climbed into the car. Taking a breath, the cabin rocked as Naruto jumped onto the roof. Another smile made its way to her lips as she felt her trust in Naruto grow. It didn't matter if she didn't know everything. Just knowing Naruto wanted to save people was enough for her. Urza skidded to a stop on a cliff above the Kanugi station. The carriages were left there in front of the station, with the engine and first compartment gone. 
The group listened in on the bits and pieces that they could pick up from the distance. Things like hijacked, dark guild and giant scythe floated up to their ears and Urza nodded gravely. Quickly piecing together the puzzle, she turned and looked over her shoulder. Well, it looks like Eisenwald has stolen the train, thanks to you Natsu. We would have made it too. A pathetic whimper floated from the windows as Natsu clutched his swirling head. Naruto looked down at the station, not quite understanding the point of their motives. Why steal train? It goes only on tracks. Happy poked his head out the window and looked down. Why? Eisenwald must have a blonde for a leader cause that's really dumb. A cat received two indignant cries at the comment but ignored them. Urza chuckled at the cat and spoke up. No, I can see the reasoning. It may only follow tracks, but it is fast, one of the fastest things in Earthland. The only reason we can catch up to them is because of me. Lucy nodded, seeing the simple fact behind the arrogant-sounding statement. Yeah, but the military should be able to catch them, yeah. Or at least, head them off at the next station. Naruto meanwhile had begun fidgeting, anxious to catch up to the Dark Guild. Can we go? Looking up at him, Lucy gave him a sad look. You really want to stop this, don't you? Naruto said nothing and just grabbed his headband as Urza took off. Skidding into the next town of Ashibana, Urza floored it towards the station, desperate to make it in time. Leaning out the window, Grey called out a warning to her. Don't go too fast or you'll run out of magic power. The woman laughed. I don't care, I just want to get there before anything bad happens. Besides, I have you and Natsu here. We'll be okay. Pulling his head back inside, Lucy gave a shriek as she noticed that he was naked again. Naruto however ignored them and kept looking ahead, trying to see their stop. Smoke was billowing up in the distance and an ominous feeling settled on the blonde. Finally seeing the station, Naruto swallowed as he saw it as the source of the smoke. Feeling the vehicle beneath him lock the brakes on, Naruto crouched and jumped, using the momentum of the car to carry him over the crowd and officials, landing behind them and sprinting up the stairs in a flash. He heard someone shout at him, but he ignored it. Looking around, he could feel that strange wrongness return, smothering the area. Running from door to door, he found nothing. Dashing up the stairs, he stopped when he saw what looked like over 50 guards all lying on the ground, either groaning in pain or completely knocked out. The lack of spirit from a few of them made Naruto guess they might already be dead too. Kneeling beside one who was awake, he gently tapped his face. What happened? Groaning, the man opened an eye to a whiskered face. A, a train derailed an HNNN, and a dark guild came running out. They beat us down and pushed every, everyone else out. I don't know what they want. Naruto nodded. Thanks, now sleep. Capping a pressure point on his neck, the man lost consciousness. Straightening up, Naruto heard the rapid tapping of about five feet drawing close. Turning, Urza and the group appeared around the corner, Natsu draped over Lucy's shoulder, still apparently affected by the motion sickness. Do you know what happened? Naruto nodded. And you? The redhead nodded. Frowning, she cast a gaze over the fallen men. This is horrible. Who could do such a thing? Lucy sighed as she looked around as well. Horrible people I guess. I just hope they aren't too strong. Indeed. Turning, Urza pointed a finger at Levy. Levy, would you please run around the area and set up a few support and trap runes? Anything that could help us at all will be greatly appreciated. Sure, I'll be off then. Waving, the blunette then turned back down the previous hallway and started running. Smiling, Urza cracked a few knuckles. Now to put these people in their place. Running the stairs, she drew level with Naruto, and the two dashed down the main hall, the others not too far behind. Skidding to a stop, the four mages, one ninja and one cat came face to face with the guild they had been chasing. Apparently, it was the entire guild too, if anything to judge by the numbers. They all turned and looked at the group, smirking as they saw the pitiful assembly. Urza stepped forward and looked around. As she did do, a deep laugh echoed out to greet them. Ah, flies of fairy tale, welcome. I had a feeling you'd turn up. Scrutinizing the owner of the voice, Urza frowned. So, you're Eriger I presume. Naruto glared at the man as he laughed again. The pale human had a sharp face with a rather long fringe hanging down and covering the left side of his face. A small dark blue arrow tattoo reached down from each of his lower eyelids, stopping just in line with his nose. The rest of his hair stuck up backwards in a similar fashion to Sasuke's, only his was a light gray in comparison to the Uchiha's deep black. A ragged black cape was tied around his neck, hanging halfway down his bare back, his whole chest and upper arms covered in blue spiraling tattoos. Below his bare torso was an equally raggy white belt and pair of faded blue pants, each looking like they'd be better off in the bin than clothing someone. A large death scythe hung lazily over his shoulder too, just begging to be used on someone, anyone. The man said nothing though as the Shikamaru lookalike spoke up, venting his frustrations at Natsu. 
This seemed to snap the fire child out of his sickness as he heard his voice. Pushing himself to his feet, Natsu turned and leveled a dangerous glare at the spiky-haired man. You might as well bend over and show me your ass now because I'm going to kick it so hard your grandkids will feel the bruise. Interrupting further threats from Natsu, Urza cut him off with a worthwhile question. What do you plan to do with Lullaby? Laughing again, Eriger then stood up and actually floated off the roof of the carriage. The small batch of fairy tale mages all widened their eyes as they saw the evil man do a couple of lazy spins through the air. H he's flying. That's wind magic. Hearing Lucy and Happy shout out, Naruto looked up at the smiling devil. Wind magic hey. Had Naruto not seen that with his own eyes, he would have just laughed. But now that he knew it was possible, an idea began to form in his mind. Reluctantly pushing it to the back for the moment, Naruto focused as Eriger spoke. Oh, you didn't realize. In a station this big, what could there be? The group's eyes widened as he then alighted on the speaker system. So that's what they had planned. You intend to broadcast lullaby. Eriger laughed again. There are currently thousands of people surrounding this building. Turn the volume up enough and the whole city hears the beautiful song. Simple isn't it? Growling, Urza took an aggressive step forward. You want to play this to innocent people. Why? He laughed again. Naruto bristled at the grating noise. Because these ignorant people don't even know that while they enjoy their rights and safety, others are denied these simple privileges. Living life ignoring these things is a sin of the worst kind. So the deaf god has come to punish the sinners. Lucy then stepped up, appalled by his logic. So what? This is all about you wanting to get your rights back. You're a dark guild for a reason. You committed hundreds of crimes. You've even killed people. Eriger shook his head. No, we haven't come this far for rights, we've come this far for power. By gaining this, we can wipe the slate clean and control the future. Isn't that wonderful? Just as he threw his head back to laugh again, a resounding crack echoed loudly through the room, quickly followed by one of the train carriages exploding as Eriger was brutally kicked through it and into the ground. Wide eyes all around looked at the destruction, then up at where the man was standing. In his place was Naruto, his eyes hidden as a malicious aura began to press down on everyone present. You, you scum, you don't know how much human want to just live in peace. You try break this, I will kill you. The majority of the dark guild swallowed when the blonde shouted at them. He was not mucking around. The group from Fairy Tail, however was now looking at Naruto in shock. Did he really just threaten to kill these people? Evil or not, death was never allowed. Growling, Urza frowned. This was just what she needed, another loose cannon. Pulling a sword out, she knelt down in preparation for the fight. Something told her it was not going to be pretty, not by anyone's standards. Master Eriger. The Dark Guild members looked on in absolute shock as the aura continued to press down on them. Their leader, their death god, defeated in a single hit. Impossible. The weight continued to increase on them until an agitated growl sounded out from the wreckage. Don't write me off yet you fools. It'd take more than that to finish me. Redirecting his gaze, Naruto locked eyes with the man as he rubbed a growing lump on his jaw. Turning to the side, he spat out a wad of blood. A slightly maniacal glint had entered his eyes and he stared up at the blonde, smiling at him through bloodied teeth. You must really want to die maggot. Oh, trust me when I saw once I'm done, I'm coming for your head. Naruto balled his fists up and frowned. Why wait? Come at me now. Chuckling, Eriger winced as he touched his lump. Standing, he let his magic begin to lift him off the ground, quickly riding above Naruto's current position. While I'd love to, I currently have more pressing issues. Don't worry though, I will find you. Men, finish off this lot will you? Leave the blonde one alive though. He's mine. Seeing him flicker, Naruto jumped at him. Wait. Just as Naruto reached him though, Eriger phased out, disappearing from view. Shooting through his after image, Naruto flew a little way before landing on the far wall. Growling, he punched it, leaving a small indent in the cement. Calming himself, he took a few breaths and closed his eyes. That cursed Kyuubi chakra had started coming through again, affecting his mind. It had been a while since someone had been able to rile Naruto up like that. Turning his thoughts internal, Naruto scrutinized himself. What is it about him that made me so crazy? Even around pain I didn't lose it like that. So what was it about him? Sighing, Naruto shook his head. Killing him randomly like that wouldn't be upholding Jiraiya Sensei's teachings all that well. It wasn't a drive to kill for revenge though, so what was it? The answer was right there, but just out of his grasp. Standing, Naruto let the minute amounts of Yoki seep back into the seal. Turning his gaze across the tracks, he looked at the group who were now fighting. Natsu and Grey had disappeared, leaving only Urza and Lucy to fight the guild. Snorting, Naruto crouched. Whose bright idea was that? 
jumping. Naruto flew over the tracks, landing lightly on a carriage roof before front flipping over the mob, twisting his body 180 degrees to land facing back at the fight. Urza seemed to be handling herself well enough, the powerful woman pulling weapon after weapon from the air to deal with the varying attacks that came at her. Lucy had summoned some strange-looking, well-dressed man with crab legs sticking out from his spine. He also sported a matching pair of short red antennae, sticking out from his head at a 45-degree angle. He seemed to be flowing through the group of men, cutting them down with a pair of scissors. Not quite sure what to make of that, Naruto just crossed his fingers. While the two were doing a good job of finishing off whoever ran at them, there were still plenty more who were eager to fight. Urza seemed to be running low on power too, probably as a result from driving that weird vehicle too fast. Cage Bunch and Shadow Clone Instantly surrounded by 20 replicas of himself, Naruto charged forward into the fray. As his clones began to create havoc in the ranks of weak mages, Naruto backed up to Urza, knocking away a mage at her back. Or Natsu, Grey. Her sword disappeared in a bright glow to be replaced with a long spear with which she used to catch a downward sword swipe. Parrying it, she knocked the man to the ground with the blunt end before delivering him a powerful kick to the ribs, blowing him back and knocking down a few of his friends. While you were having your reflective moment over there, I sent them to catch up with Eriger. I hope you don't mind. Dodging a swipe, Naruto unleashed a furious uppercut into his opponent's gut, lifting him clean off the ground and knocking him out instantly. Alright, I go to Lucy now. Watching Naruto disappear from the corner of her eye, Urza frowned. Where had that malicious aura he was emitting disappear to? From what she knew, it took a lot of control to even focus intent like that. To simply switch it off as Naruto had done was beyond anything she had met before. Sliding around another feeble attack, Urza let her weapon glow and swapped it out for a mace, swinging the heavy weapon down and landing a solid blow to the man's legs. Stepping over him, she continued her swing into the man behind the first. Crying out in effort, she let it glow and brought her second hand around, catching a pair of twin swords. There was definitely more to Naruto than met the eye, and she was going to find out what it was. Kaya, diving to the side, Lucy landed with her hands over her head as a sword narrowly missed her, shaving off a few weeks worth of hair in the process. Hearing him grunt, and then exhale, she looked up as the man flew over her head to land in a boneless heap several meters away. Looking over her shoulder with wide eyes, she saw Naruto standing there on one leg as he kicked through with a roundhouse, implanting another man into the ground solidly. Kneeling down, he looked her over before holding a hand out. You okay? Blushing lightly, Lucy nodded and took his hand. She eeped as he easily pulled her to her feet, steadying her. What she didn't expect next was for him to wrap his arms around her in a tight embrace and spin her around. And Naruto. She felt an impact jar through his body as something connected with him. Flinching, he snapped a fist up knuckles first into the face of a man who just landed a heavy punch into the middle of his back. Blood squirted from the orifice as his eyes rolled into his head. He wasn't given a chance to fall over though as Naruto spun through with a back elbow, catching the assailant to the cheekbone and blowing him away. Naruto gently put Lucy down as the pretty girl's mind caught up with everything that happened. If Naruto hadn't just pulled her around in that hug, she would have caught that last blow to the back of her head. Finding herself blushing again, she looked up at Naruto as he glared around them making sure it was safe for the moment. He caught her spellbound eyes though and chuckled sheepishly. Sorry, you okay? Not quite trusting her voice, she just nodded. She couldn't remember the last time someone took a hit like that for her. Realizing she was staring, she blinked a few times and looked away. T thanks. I'll be alright now. Apparently not. From the way Naruto pushed her to the side to land a solid fist in the surprise attacker's face. Frowning, Lucy tightened her fists. She was a mage of fairy tale, and here she was, needing to be protected like a child. Frowning, she pointed at the rest of the group and cried out to her spirit. Cancer, cut all these guys down to size. The dark glasses he wore flashed as he crossed his arms. Shrimp, Naruto's nose crinkled when he heard the speech quirk. Wait, what? In a flash of steel, Naruto watched as the man dubbed Cancer shot around them at a blinding speed, quickly disposing of the rest of the men around them. There was one thing Naruto couldn't understand though. Why shrimp? He a crab. Lucy looked a little perplexed at the question. It doesn't matter what he says, so long as he gets the job done. Naruto looked at the man as he snipped his scissors around his body in a strange dance. Yeah but still. Pouting, Lucy looked away. 
Well sorry for something I have no control over. Hearing Urza cry out, the pair looked over. She seemed to be getting cranky at the never-ending stream of eyes and old members. As such, her body had started glowing again as she requiped a whole new armor. The eyes and old members all paused and looked up in delight as her original armor faded away, leaving her body dressed in nothing but light. Placing a hand on his hip, Naruto raised an appreciative eyebrow as he observed the lack of clothing. Yep, she was definitely a very well-developed woman all right. Hearing a sigh off to his right, Naruto looked over at a star-struck Lucy. I think I'm in love. Resisting the mental images that wished to spring forward, Naruto shook his head. A nosebleed now would do no good. Once the light passed, Naruto looked up to see Urza now dressed in a whole new outfit. She was covered in a scaled metal outfit, with elbow-length gauntlets and thigh-high metal boots, hidden beneath a shin-length skirt of pleated silver. Four wings of polished chrome also attached to the back of her torso plate, the front of it revealing her stomach and a very servicing amount of cleavage. Two small wings stuck out from under her loose hair just above her ears, the fringe now hanging low across the right side of her face. Two matching swords were clasped in each hand, and around her was a halo made out of probably ten or twelve gleaming swords. She's telekinetic. Dance my swords. Circle sword. The swords began rotating around her body, picking up speed until they were nothing more than a deadly glinting hoop of steel. Crying out, Urza flung them into the frozen crowd and in one move, decimated the forces of Eisenwald. While, spectacular, Naruto couldn't help but question her judgment. Why didn't she just do that first? Happy, who had been conveniently absent during the fight, decided to make an appearance. The knight is Urza's trump card in most fights. It takes a lot of magic power though so she usually saves it till last. And where were you hiding, useless cat? Crying out as Lucy grabbed him, Happy squirmed around in vain, trying to escape the cheek-pinching torture. Ignoring them, Naruto jogged over as Urza fell to one knee, clothing reverting to what it was originally. You okay? Looking up at him, the redhead nodded as she caught her breath. Yeah, I just used too much magic power. Give me time though, I'll be fine. You go help Natsu and Grey find Eriger. Take Lucy too, she'll be more use with you. Straightening, Naruto nodded. Turning, he ran to the nearest door, briefly stopping to gather Lucy and Happy. Watching as the group disappeared, Urza allowed herself a moment of weakness as she dropped her hands to the floor. She was very low on magic power. Despite still not trusting Naruto after his initial comment towards Eriger, she had no choice but to leave it in his hands for the moment. Damn it. Running along, Naruto tried to put himself in Eriger's shoes. If I was some floating freak bent on mass murder, where would I go? W wait. You're too fast. Looking over his shoulder, Naruto saw Lucy collapse against a wall, her chest heaving as she tried to catch her breath. Tisking in annoyance, Naruto skidded to a stop. You can't run. Shaking her head, Lucy gasped out an answer. No two puffed. Walking back, Naruto knelt down in front of her. Piggyback. The question got a foot embedded into his back and he found himself face first on the floor, wondering what just happened. You wish you could touch me some more. Rolling over, Naruto scratched his head. No, just want to find Eriger fast. Straightening up, Lucy closed her eyes. Do you even know where he could be? Naruto shook his head as he stood, not even knowing where they were right then. Lucy let out a sigh and rubbed her temples. All right then, we need to try work out where he'd be. He said they were broadcasting it, so that means that they'll need to find the relay room. So that's most likely where they'll be. Squealing happily at her detective prowess, she jumped onto a surprise Naruto's back, kicking her heels into his sides and pointed forward. Mush, I thought you don't want ride. She shrugged. I'm tired. Besides, don't you want to carry a beautiful girl like me? She started tearing at the eyes and placed a finger to her pouting lips, making herself look as adorable as possible. Ignoring that, Naruto looked at Happy. She always like this. The cat blinked. I suppose so. Nothing she ever does makes sense to me though. Fuming, she dropped a fist onto Naruto's head. Oi, I'm right here you know. Ignoring her, Naruto slung an arm through each of Lucy's legs and dashed off, eliciting a squeal of surprise from her at the rapid acceleration. You tell me where to go. Wait, that's Gray's voice. Skidding to a stop, Naruto looked over at Happy. Where? Listening. The cat pointed at a destroyed door. In there. Turning, Naruto ran in to collide with Gray as he came running out. Currently having more weight than Gray, Naruto steamrollered the teen, running him flat as his momentum carried him through. Gray. What wrong? Groaning from the floor, the mage rolled over, cracking his back in the process. As he got up, Naruto looked around curiously, seeing many spikes of ice jutting up all around the room, along with a member of the Eisenwald guild frozen within one extra big spike. What all this? Now kneeling, Grey looked up. 
That's my magic, ice make. Enough here though. We gotta go find Urza and Natsu. Eriger is headed to the guild master's meeting. As the mage ran out, Naruto and Lucy shared a look. Readjusting his grip, Naruto hoisted Lucy up higher and ran out, easily catching up to Grey. Looking down from her seat, Lucy questioned the dark-haired teen. So why isn't Eriger here? Casting her a glance, Grey grumbled something. Can't you work it out? He wasn't going to play lullaby here at all. That was just a rouse to get us trapped here. Gasping, Lucy grabbed Naruto's shoulders as she leant over. No way. How could we have missed that? Grey sighed. We were just too focused on the now, rather than trying to look ahead to see when they'd attack the meeting. As Lucy leant back in fear, Grey cast her another glance as she bobbed away on Naruto's back. So what are you doing up there anyway? Blushing, Lucy raised a hand to her head and giggled. Oh, I got tired. Rolling his eyes, Grey let it go. Whatever, or as I should be just here. Appearing on a balcony that overlooked the initial fight area, Grey called out to Urza, interrupting her interrogation of the Eisenwald Guild members. Urza, we need to get out of here. Eriger tricked us into coming here so he could lock us in while he went and attacked the master's meeting. Growling angrily, she thrust her current prisoner into the ground, smacking his head and knocking him out. Damn it, just what we need. Where's Natsu? Grey shrugged. We split up. We need to find him then escape. Right. Standing, Urza leapt up the massive gap and landed lightly beside Naruto. Seeing him carrying Lucy, she glared at him. Are you hurt Lucy? Blushing yet again, Lucy shook her head. And no, Urza, I'm fine. Casting them one more curious glance, Urza shook her head and poked Grey. Lead us to Natsu. On it, a massive boom sounded out from somewhere above the group and they all staggered around, trying to regain their balance. Hearing a frustrated cry after that, they all shared a look. Natsu, another boom and earthquake rocked the building and Urza ground her teeth together. We must find him before he destroys the building. Let's go. Taking head point, Urza started sprinting towards the noise, reaching a set of stairs at the end of the corridor. Charging up them, Urza looked around and saw Natsu kicking holes in the wall, his eyes flaming in fury as he cried out curse after curse at Eriger. Where the hell are you? Come out and fight me like a real man. A hand landed on his shoulder and in a scream of triumph, spun around, fist ablaze, ready to deck whoever it was that touched him. His hand collided with an outstretched palm causing a shockwave to blow out from the connection. The next thing he knew was fear as he looked into Urza's furious eyes. Where have you been all this time? Eriger has left. Backing away in fear, Natsu held up his hands. I, I didn't know. I swear. Growling, the fiery mage resisted the urge to smack him and walked past the cowering boy. Seeing a balcony, she walked out onto it and was greeted by the sight of a massive protective tornado completely surrounding the building. Slamming her fist down onto the railing, Urza cursed. How are we meant to get out of here? This is a one-way wind spell. Naruto looked up at Lucy in confusion. One way. Lucy's eyes hardened. It means you can get in from the outside, but can't get back out from the inside, unless you want to get shredded in the process. There's no way to dispel it either. Hum. Gently lowering Lucy to the ground, Naruto walked up to stand beside Urza. Wind magic. Tapping her forehead as she though, Urza nodded. Yes, and I cannot think of a way to break out yet. Nodding slowly, Naruto reached out. The winds were very close and as he touched it, he felt his fingertips get shredded by the sharp winds. A hand quickly snaked out and grabbed it, pulling it away. What are you doing? Do you want to lose your fingers? Sucking the blood away, Naruto shook his head. I heal fast. Just testing. Rolling her eyes, Urza pointed back at Natsu and Grey, who were currently involved in another argument. Go and stand with them if you have nothing better to do than shred your fingers. Nodding again, Naruto stepped back, sucking on his fingers and thought. A giant tornado thing he'd done something like that before, just nowhere near as large. He'd got stuck on it in the first stage of racing and spiraling sphere training. He had simply created a swirling circle of chakra to stir up the water balloon before realizing he had to cause his chakra to swirl in all directions to break the elastic rubber. Doing that same first step here, but on a greater scale might break the tornado, mightn't it? Holding his hand out, Naruto let his chakra begin to circle in his palm, watching how the air reacted to the probing. It took a moment, but he began to feel his clothes gently rustle in the breeze. Kneeling down, he held his hand out and watched as the dust from the floor began to rise into the technique, swirling around in his little whirlwind. Smiling, he cancelled the chakra flow. Now, if he could do that just on a bigger scale. His smile widened as an idea appeared. Calling out to the group, he waved them in. Maybe I have way to get out. Stay here and watch. Eyes widening, Lucy reached out just as he turned. How though? Tapping his nose, Naruto winked. Magic? Running to the balcony, Naruto looked up and then jumped. 
The group followed him out, looking up as he scaled the building to alight on the very most tip of the building. Squinting, Urza frowned as he suddenly grew still. What is he doing? Remembering this lack of movement from before, Lucy's eyes widened. I know what he's doing. He said something about Senjutsu Sage techniques when he did that last time. It gives him heightened senses I think he said. Gray glanced at Lucy. And how is that meant to help us? The girl looked at him. Well, he said it didn't only help him with sensing things, but he didn't tell. Turning his face skyward again, Gray clicked his tongue as he waited. What did the weird blonde have planned? Standing perfectly still, Naruto let the natural energy surrounding him enter him and grant him strength. Shivering slightly as he felt the rush of new power, he opened his eyes and looked at the wind. It most certainly was powerful. Whatever it was that caused it because while they were spinning around the tower at upwards of 100 kilometers 60 miles an hour, they were that well controlled that they didn't disturb the air mere feet in from the perimeter. Nodding as his understanding of the technique increased, Naruto raised his hands into the ram seal and closed his eyes. Swirl the chakra. Let the chakra take up the air and swirl it around. Good. Now faster. Stronger. Wider. Taller. Thicker. From the outside, Naruto began to disappear into a distorted air vortex as he began generating a tornado of his own. Reaching out with his senses, he pushed it up and outward, growing it to meet the size of the swirling winds just beyond his own. He frowned as they made contact, feeling the suppressive force of the enemy tornado trying to drag his own counterclockwise with it. Pumping more chakra into it, Naruto let it grow. The group below had their mouths dropped open at the display of power, their jaws dropping ever further open as the swirling air around him continued to grow outward in a bell shape, molding itself to the inside of the wall of wind just beyond them. Natsu looked over the edge as Naruto's vortex stretched past them, reaching right down, growing close to the ground. His eyes widened though as a familiar shock of blue caught his eye. Levy, jumping from the balcony before anyone could say anything. He slammed a firecase fist into the wall to slow his descent as he raced down. Quickly overtaking Naruto's wind, he let his hand fall from the wall and dropped the fifteen or so feet to the ground, landing solidly and dashing over to Levy. Grabbing her, he dragged her away from the edge of the wall to safety. Shaking her shoulders gently, he roused the girl. Levy, Levy, what happened? Who did this to you? Struggling to open an eye, Levy stirred and mumbled something. And Natsu, nodding, he held her tight as Naruto's wind touched down blowing out a considerable amount of rock and chewed up cement from the ground. Yeah, it's me Levy, you'll be okay. A familiar chuckle then sounded out from behind him, turning his furious gaze to rest upon the man. Natsu ground his teeth together. Keijama, the spiky-haired man nodded with a grin. Indeed, I see you found your precious rune girl too. Looking down at Levy, Natsu glared back up at the man. You did this to her. He nodded, seemingly pleased with his work. I had to. Don't take it personal or anything. Just business. Couldn't let her finish those pesky things. They're an absolute pain to break. Though, I wouldn't mind if you did take it personal. That'd just give me another reason to fight you. Growling dangerously, Natsu gently put the girl down. Standing, his eyes disappeared into his fringe. You dare. You dare lay a hand on my friend. The man laughed. Yeah, I dare. What you gonna do about it? Raising a deadly glare to meet the creepy man's gaze, Natsu clenched his fists, fire exploding to life around them. I'm gonna beat you to within an inch of your life. Screaming, Natsu charged, fist raised. Laughing, Keijama raised his hands. Arrows seemed to shoot from his very shadow as he did so, all with the intent of piercing Natsu through. Arching his back into painful positions, Natsu managed to dodge them and fell back to gain some room. Huh, that all you got? You'll have to do better than to if you even want to get near me. Screaming, Natsu charged again. Rising up more arrows, Keijama sent them shooting in at Natsu. You honestly think that will work? You just tried it. Ignoring the taunt, Natsu slammed his fists together before reaching both arms far behind his back. Flinging them forward, he screamed out in effort as the enhanced fire magic easily broke through the shadow arrows and smashed into the mage. Fire Dragon's Wing Attack not even given a chance to scream, the explosion slammed Keijama back into the wall behind him, through it, into another wall behind that, through that one as well and finally into the third wall behind that. Even then, the force was enough to create a mass of spider-webbed cracks to splay out from the point of impact. Coughing once, Keijama's eyes rolled into his head, blood dripping from his mouth as he slumped into unconsciousness. Not even bothering to look at his handiwork, Natsu turned and ran over to Levi. He frowned up at the swirling wind barrier as it continued to grow. Something else was happening within it too because now he could hear a loud buzz coming from it, sounding much like one razor blade over another. Frowning at the strangeness, Natsu carefully picked up Levi and quickly left the area. 
Naruto frowned as he felt the wind barrier continue to repel his own. His own just didn't seem strong enough yet, and if he was to pump more energy into it, he'd risk destroying the building and killing everyone inside. Maintaining a steady flow, Naruto decided it was time to up the power. It was a fairly simple technique to hold, just requiring a whole lot more chakra than the average Jounin had. With that in mind, Naruto began to mold the outflow of his chakra, twisting it with his own elemental nature. A high-pitched whine began to emanate from the contact points as Naruto's own wind-imbued tornado began to actively tear into the external one. Breathing steadily, Naruto pushed more wind-natured chakra into the tornado, smiling slightly as he felt it dig into the weakening wall beyond it. Just a little more and he'd be through. The noise unfortunately was proving to be a problem as it began to reach an ear-piercing volume. Cringing, Naruto mentally called out an apology to his friends, asking them to endure it for just a small bit longer. Damn, what is this noise? The group on the balcony were all leaning against something for support as they clutched their tortured ears. Poor Happy copying it the worst as his heightened sense of hearing made things so much worse. Crying out, Lucy slid to the floor. How much longer will this last? As if in answer to the question, a loud boom sounded out, shaking the very foundations of the building as Naruto finally broke through the prison. Sighing in relief, the group allowed themselves a moment of reprieve before looking out. Their eyes widened as they saw the last of the wind battle flick away, tiny whirlwinds dancing away down the streets as the power behind it dispersed. A moment later, Naruto swung in through the entrance, sending them an apologetic smile. Sorry about noise. Didn't think that happened. Wriggling a finger around in her ear, Urza grunted. It doesn't matter. It worked. Though next time you do something like that, you might want to think about the consequences beforehand. Chuckling nervously, Naruto just nodded. So, we go now. Nodding, the group turned and began running down the stairs. As they left though, Naruto noticed Happy had still yet to move. Happy, reaching out, he tapped the cat. Looking up through a clenched eye, he let go of his ears. Huh? You coming? What? Pursing his lips, Naruto looked over his shoulder. It would probably be best if Urza and Natsu didn't know about this just yet. Come to think of it, where was that boy? Where Natsu? What? Cringing, Naruto looked at the temporarily deaf cat. Sighing, he scooped him up in his arms and ran after the group. Reaching the ground, the group looked around for Natsu. Seeing him crouched over a small body, everyone panicked and rushed forward. Natsu, Natsu, are you okay? What happened? Raising his tear-stroked eyes, Natsu hiccuped. It's over. It's all over. Gasping, Lucy raised a hand to her mouth, tears gathering in the corners of her eyes. Gray, Naruto and Urza also gasped, not quite ready to believe that Levi was. The noise is over. Leaping around, Natsu crowed his thanks to the heavens above that that dreadful noise had finally subsided. A solid smack to his head later though, and Natsu was laying face first in the ground with Lucy screaming at him. What the hell is wrong with you, scaring us all like that? Urza meanwhile had knelt beside Levi. While still unconscious, she was breathing fine. She'll be okay. Natsu, how did this happen? Pushing himself from the floor, Natsu spat a wad off to the side in disgust. That spiky-haired prick Kajama attacked her while she was writing runes. I told him I'd beat him close to death for even touching her, and I did. What's left of him is down there. Pointing at a sizable hole in the wall, Naruto walked over and looked in. Seeing the bleeding mass of flesh three walls back, he whistled. Nice. Pushing himself to his feet, Natsu dusted himself down and walked into the hole. I can't let him die on me here though. I'm bringing him along so I can take care of him. As Natsu walked in, Urza's eyes flashed. That reminds me Naruto. What was that claim of yours inside that you'd kill Eriger? Looking at Urza cautiously, Naruto shook his head. May not follow. Crossing her arms, the rest of the group backed off. Sensing conflict, Happy disentangled himself from Naruto's arms and quickly flew over to Lucy, landing on her head. You know full well what I mean. Why did you threaten to kill him? And what was with that horrific intent? Unconsciously grabbing his stomach, Naruto frowned. That wasn't a secret he was about to release just yet. Looking around at the group, he saw them all looking at him cautiously, interested in his answer. I am ninja where I come from. While I not like it, sometime, we kill. A succession of gasps passed through the group at Naruto's confession. He'd actually killed someone before. Stepping forward menacingly, Urza clenched her fists. How can you casually say that? Death is something to never be taken lightly. No matter what they have done wrong, death is never the answer. Frowning, Naruto didn't back down. What do you know? Thousands in my world die because of evil men. If we weren't to kill them, then the killing keeps going. Revenge kills, assassin kills, they bad. But people who want power for evil reasons they have their chance. But if they must, they die. Taking another step forward, Urza raised a gauntlet-clad fist. But that is a human life you take. 
How do you live with yourself? Looking back calmly, Naruto easily met her gaze. It's hard, harder than you can imagine. But if it's to protect my home and peace, then I gladly lay down my life to take another's. Stepping forward, Urza reached Naruto. The two were locked in a fierce battle of the wills, everyone outside of each other blotted out. Looking to the sky, Grey frowned. Stepping in, he placed a solid hand on Urza's shoulder. Yes, it seems we have out differences, but for the moment Naruto is our ally. Time is wasting and you two are not helping. Eriger is our first priority here. Staring a moment longer, Urza stepped down, but not before one last glare. This isn't over. Naruto said nothing as they group began walking away. Natsu passed him, cautiously glancing over at him as he carried the Keijama fellow along with him. Lucy also cast one more worried look over her shoulder before climbing into the sea and disappearing from sight. Urza jumped onto the driver's seat and called out to Naruto. You coming? Naruto shook his head. They all seemed a bit shaken by this so he decided to give them a little time to collect their thoughts. I catch up. Snorting, Urza revved the engine. Suit yourself. Spinning up the wheels, the mobile wagon took off, quickly disappearing down the street. Watching them go until he couldn't see them anymore, Naruto finally let his face soften. He could sympathize with Urza, but that didn't make her right. Sighing, Naruto ruffled his hair. That could have gone better, but there were some recent events had enlightened him on life and death. Life was one big hypocritical circle. Live a life of peace and be killed by the evil of the world, or rise above them, kill the killers, and bring about peace. Death seemed to always be a solution to some situations, especially when the lives of innocents were at stake. The world Juria spoke of was a world without each of these, but thus far it was proving to be a very big task to complete. Naruto wasn't about to back down from that though, not a chance. Frowning, Naruto cupped his chin with his hand. There was something wrong with Urza for her to have reacted the way she did. The others were understandable simply because, if Naruto guessed correctly, they had never been faced with a person who had taken a life before. The look in Urza's eye though, it was almost like she was reaffirming something she had told herself, just as much as she was trying to convert Naruto. Wandering inside the destroyed building, Naruto leant against a wall. Granted, this world was much more peaceful than his own, basking in the light rather than the shadows, but what would happen should a suitably evil person came along, try to talk them out of it. While always a good starting point, most people like that hadn't responded all that well to Naruto's attempts. So far, he could count all the positive responses on one hand. Thinking back to Eriger again, Naruto tried to work out just why he just rubbed him so completely the wrong way. Pondering it, Naruto nodded as he realized what it was. Having your system touched by the Kyuubai never helped rational thinking. Now that his head was clear, it made many times more sense. Eriger had no alternate motive. While Pain wanted peace, Eriger just wanted death. There was no motivation for a greater good. He just wanted to laugh while the world burned. Shaking his head, Naruto sighed. That kind of man had no place in a world like this, or in any world for that matter. That kind of man was the kind that needed a death warrant on his head. It just seemed though that Urza, or the other members for that matter, didn't see it that way. Rubbing his eyes, Naruto nodded to himself. If Urza couldn't understand that, then Naruto could sympathize. This world was a great deal different than his own. But she couldn't judge him for something she had never experienced. He gave a humorless laugh. If Urza had been the unlucky one to be shot over to his world, she'd probably be dead by now. Looking to the sky out a window, Naruto sighed again. If he could somehow make his world like this one... Then that would be just brilliant. No killing, no matter what. The thought brought a little smile to his face. It wasn't an if, he'd definitely make it, one day. Without a doubt, because that's what his father, the third and his sensei entrusted with him. He would never let them down. Tightening his headband, Naruto resolved himself. He was going to help finish off this mess he'd been dragged into and find out what was eating Urza so bad. But after that, it was time to say goodbye and find a way home. He had a job to do. Looking around the corner, Naruto saw official-looking people beginning to crowd around the entrance. Leaning back, Naruto quietly snuck back up the stairs and into the shadows. No one even noticed the black and orange streak shoot from the third floor to the adjacent house. So alright folks that's all for today. Stay tuned for part 3. Do subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Also check out the story and author Lanky Nathan on finfiction.net. Press the bell icon to be notified first on release. See you in the next video till then goodbye.